A new season, stunning 17th ranked Louisville. The Cats dominated field position, turning in a stellar defensive effort. And offensively, the running game picked up, relieving the pressure on quarterback Jared Lorenzen. The Governor's Cup is back in Lexington. And today, the home opener as the Cats greet Texas El Paso. From Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, it's University of Kentucky Wildcat football. Today, it's the Kentucky Wildcats versus the Texas El Paso Miners. Today's game is brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. By St. Joseph Heart Institute, Kentucky's only top 50 heart hospital. By your local Ford dealer, quality people, quality products. By KU, where low rates and high level of service combine to make KU a great energy value. By Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance, Kimi, Kentucky's leading workers' comp provider. By Pepsi, the joy of cola. And by CHA Health. Log on to www.chahealth.com. Coming off a big, big win over Louisville last weekend, and today it's the home opener. Hot September afternoon, Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. It's the Kentucky Wildcats against the Miners of Texas El Paso. Hello, everybody. I'm Rob Romley. Along with me, former Wildcat Bill Ransdell, and the fans are still buzzing around the state. Of course, Guy Morris has had to bring his team back down to earth, but, Bill, it was the biggest thing for Kentucky football in some time. Big win. 1-0 right now. First time in four years they've been in this position. What they want to do now is take the next step and continue to build on it. But really, it was the defensive domination. That's the only way you can put it uh, that won the ball game for Kentucky. They were simply in Dave Ragone's face all afternoon long. They were on him all day, and they've talked about the positives of the seven, but more specifically the front four. Right there you can see Sweet Pea Burns coming in and giving a little shake and letting them know about it. Next thing you watch on your left side of your screen right here you can see Ellery Moore coming in. Ragone was on his back most of the day or getting hit. When he did have a chance to throw it, you can see there's Flowers right there at the right time making a fast break up and there was always something there going on for the defense. So the guys up front really did the job and the game was played in Louisville territory. Offensively, Jared Lorenzo in a solid performance. He did not have a turnover, but really it was the running game. R2 Spinner carrying the football. Came in and he said, Jared did a good job, but the tooth was loose last week. He rushed for 87 yards. He also had another 20 plus yards to give him 123 yards of total offense for the game. They need to keep it in his hands. That's what they want to do. They want to be able to control the, the clock as well as the line of scrimmage. So the Wildcats are 1-0. Texas El Paso also coming into this game off an opening victory over Sacramento State. We've got more coming up. It's the home opener here in Lexington as Kentucky takes on the Miners of Utah. <laughs> Here in Lexington, it's an afternoon for shirt sleeves and sunscreen as the temperature expected to reach into the low 90s. We welcome Drew Diener to our broadcast this season. He'll be down on the field. Let's check in with him right now. Drew? Well, Rob and Bill, I certainly am glad to be with you guys. I think I'd rather be up there in the press box with you in the air conditioning than down here on this hot field. An interesting note in the kicking game today. Taylor Begley and Clint Ruth going into the Louisville game were neck and neck. It was basically a game time decision, and Taylor Begley got the job. And all he did was kick three of four field goals against Louisville last week and earn SEC Special Teamer of the Week honors. However, that was not enough for him to keep his job here in week two. Special Teams coach Mark Nelson promised both of those kickers that they would each get a game to handle the kicking duty. So today, Clint Ruth gets his turn. Just a hunch here on my part, though. Should Clint Ruth miss a field goal or two, Taylor Bigley might want to keep that left leg warm. Back to you guys. Thank you, Drew. Good to have you along. The Wildcat marching band continuing to entertain here on the field. We've got the opening kickoff coming up as Kentucky takes on Utah. Well Stadium. It opened back in 1963. The Wildcats have played 180 games here. They've won 96. And a guy down on the sidelines, Billy, who has done quite a job. Guy Morris has been dealt some difficult circumstances. Uh, 
A difficult set of cards. He's done quite a job with it. Well, and uh, unlike the card game, you're not in a position in football to really bluff much, Rob. It's one of those things he's got to make it happen, and he's doing it through fundamentals and going back to the old school of football. Let's get out there. Let's practice. Let's hit. Let's tackle. Let's do what we. Let's take what they give us and see if we can't put the kids in a good position to take advantage of their athletic ability. You're looking at Derek Abney, who's going back along with. Arles Beach to return the opening kickoff. The Wildcats won the toss, elected to take the football, just as they did over at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium last Sunday. So UTEP will tee it up at the 35, kickoff from left to right. Bryce Benekos, a sophomore out of Chino Hills, California, has it teed up. And across the way, Gary Nord, the head man of the UTEP Miners, who has some strong Kentucky ties, having played at UofL and coached at UofL for so many years. A lot of connections between these two schools. The kick comes to the near side of the field. Here's Abney at about the six. Over the 20, through a hole. And a big return for Derek Abney to start the game. Penalty marker goes down. He brought it all the way back to the 38-yard line, and we could have a, a holding penalty here. J.D. Hearn made the tackle for Texas El Paso. If it's not the holding, it's probably going to be a face mask. A face mask penalty on the Miners on the opening kickoff for the Wildcats. Chase Harp is the tight end. Good group of receivers. Abney, Tommy Cook, and Ernest Sims. R2 Spinner, the running back. Nick Seitz, the junior out of Converse, Texas, over the ball at center. He'll have Matt Huff and Jason Rollins on his left. And on his right, Keith Chatelaine and Antonio Hall. Antonio Hall, the right tackle, has started every game since he came in as a true freshman last season. Spinner gets the call on first and ten and does not get very much at all as he comes up to the 44-yard line. Tim Woodard made the tackle for Utah. Tamal High and Rick Fetty are the defensive ends. Dan Kerr and Sam Clark the tackles. The linebackers, Kamar Jackson and Robert Rodriguez. And in the secondary, Mark Doughty, Wendell Cooks, Alex Ross, Tim Woodard, and D.J. Walker. It is second down, 10 yards to go. Wildcats from their own 44. Just underway here in Lexington as Lorenzen will throw for the first time. Penalty marker down. He has Abney in UTEP territory at the 49-yard line. Tim Woodard, the rover back, junior out of Houston, up there on the coverage for the Miners, but let's check out the penalty now back at the line of scrimmage. Illegal procedure against the Wildcats. Our referee here this afternoon is Thomas Ritter. The illegal procedure will move it back to the other side of the 40-yard line, back to the 39. The umpire is Daniel Pulley, the linesman Billy Shore, the line judge Michael Taylor, the field judge Michael Williams, side judge Blake Parks, and the back judge George Raniger. That's the officiating crew here this afternoon. This is second and 15. Lorenzen bounced out of the hands of Harp and incomplete. Bill, you can bet that Chase Harp would like to have that one back. As it went up in the air, and Mark Doughty, the strong safety, might have had a shot at it there, but it was going to be out of bounds. Well, they're still trying to find a groove. In the Louisville game, the tight ends had no receptions. I'm talking to the staff this week. They want to try to get Harp into the game a little bit more. They said they were going to make a concerted effort to do that, along with Boone. Right there, I think, just a good example of them not being into rhythm yet and getting in that groove. After a, week's, after a week's practice from the Louisville game. First third down situation of the afternoon. Third and 15, Lorenzen looking to the far side. He's got Ernest Sims, and he had him out there. He had the defense beaten, but it falls incomplete over at the far side of the field. Tough way for the offense to get started at this point. They wanted to get a first down and really take some time off the clock and move down the field to get into that groove offensively to give the defense as much rest as they can. It looks like they're just trying to find their way right now. It may, may take them a series or two to get it under them, and it never helps, Rob, when you have some type of penalty early to get you, you know, kind of off kilter. Glenn Pakalak. All-America third team by the Football News and first team All-SEC last season. Aaron Gibbons going to let this one go, and that proves to be a bad decision as the Wildcats have covered it down inside the five-yard line. Kentucky quickly down on the 
ball. Dion Holtz was able to get down there and fall on it inside the four. No score in the game here in the first quarter, and we'll continue from Commonwealth Stadium after this. Turn me up. Come feel the joy all around each generation. I found they left their own as a sound. You've got your own as a groove. Maybe you can't sleep, get your moon. And I think that leave you can lose. No matter what it's like outside, you can rest easy inside. Your energy rates are among the lowest in the nation, backed by dedicated, award-winning customer service. It all adds up to some pretty serious value. KU, customers first, energy that lasts. We're at this police impound lot to talk about immediate coverage from Safe Auto Insurance Company. Too many people get their car impounded for driving uninsured. That's because they wait till it's too late to find out what the penalties are for driving without insurance. Don't let it happen to you. Avoid heavy fines. Avoid having your car impounded. So call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO today. Representatives are standing by waiting to take your call. Play it safe. Pick up the phone. And call now. This is where I play baseball. Pitcher. Sometimes dry field. Daddy says it's nice and other when he played. Now he got lights. For night games. And they change the bulbs so they always work. Daddy says that's a good thing about being in an electric co-op. The people have the power. And we shine as one. the Ashland Oil player of the game. Ashland will donate $250 in that player's name to Kentucky Special Olympics. John Shopper, the quarterback for UTEP, and what we're going to see them do here this afternoon, Bill, is run the option. And this guy, a sophomore out of San Antonio, can run the football. John Shopper, he's 6'2", 210 pounds, a sophomore who had kind of an erratic season as a freshman throwing the football. His fullback is Rovan Cleveland, the running back Howard Jackson, a good little sophomore. The receivers, Chris Francis, Jonas Crafts, and Terrence Minor. Chris Kerr is over the ball at center. The tackles, Trey Darlick and a real family. And down goes Shopper. Jeremy Connell coming in to make the play. The junior out of Martin, Kentucky, and it's back inside the three-yard line. Take a look right here. You can see Connell. All he does a bull rush. By that, I mean he's just going to outstrength the guy. He ran right over the top of him. He needs, what he'll need to work on, though, is this quarterback. He has some athletic ability. Sharper does. They want to try to contain him. Caudill's going to have to get under control and the rest of that line when they get back there because he has the quickness to be able to get out of trouble. Third down. They hand it off to Rovan Cleveland. He finds a little bit of running room. Comes up to the six-yard line, but that's all. From a Kentucky defense, as Morris Lane makes the start, starting off just the way it did down in Louisville last weekend. Let's go down on the field and check in with Drew. Well, Rob, it's interesting. They opened up with that option play. Guy Morris said earlier in the week that it was a team that ran a lot of option. However, they've never run the option. They worked on it during camp, and it was supposed to be a secret they were going to unveil today. Apparently, Guy Morris still has a few spies down there in the land of Texas. I'm guessing Larry Hofer might have some connections on that one. Bryce Benekos to punt the ball out of his own end zone. Here comes Abney as the catch will get it in good field position. Inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. Outstanding field position for the Wildcats. Bubba Wiseman made the tackle for the Miners of Texas, El Paso, but the Cats will be set up, Bill, here at the... Watch El right Paso here on the 35. replay. You can see where Abney wanted to work up the right side. He was forced back in, but his instincts as a smart, heads-up player, he worked back outside to where the, the return was set up on that right sideline, trying to find his blockers. Did a great job there of getting 15 yards out of virtually nothing with the way it started. 
We've got 11 minutes, 39 seconds left to go here in the first quarter in Lexington, and there's no score in the game. Each team has had the ball one time. And the Wildcats now, as they spot it just inside the 35, will take over first and 10. We'd like to remind you to stay tuned for the Anthem Halftime Show, where we'll be breaking down all the first half action with highlights and analysis. That's the Anthem Halftime Show right here on the UK TV network. Big crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium. They were anticipating probably a little over 60,000 here for the home opener. Gary Nord across the way, the Louisville native, a tight end for the Cardinals back in the late 70s, and then an assistant coach at U of L from 1981 to 1994. Now in his third year, was WAC Coach of the Year in 2000 when they won the WAC Championship, and Bill had a down season last year, but uh, hopefully things looking up this season. Well, hopefully he, he, he's going back to his basics, too. He just wants to try to get something out of this team and make some progress. They got a win last week, and they're trying to come in here and just, I think, have a good, respectable game. Lorenz into the air. Incomplete, intended for Tommy Cook. And broken up downfield by Alex Ross and a good defensive play by the junior from El Paso. Well, good defensive play. I'll tell you, the big thing there, though, is you look and you see what Lorenzen's trying to do. He's, he's in his junior season. He's he had a good week last week, 13 for 2,795 yards. They're already trying to do what they talked about earlier. They've thrown a ball to Harp. There they were trying to go to Boone. They had it, I think, to get the, the defensive uh, back there. Ross just kind of messed up uh, Boone's eyes there. They kind of took his eyes off a little bit. Well, touchdown, but penalty markers are down. You'll see him, number 16. He's in your picture right now, and Aaron Boone just beats him. Just took it straight up. Lorenz did a great job there of voice inflection and getting them to jump offside. When you, anytime you get that, it's a free play, and they, they knew what to do in that situation and took advantage of it. And Clint Ruth on to attempt the extra point. It is good through the uprights, and with 11.26 left to go in this first quarter, the Wildcats break on top as Aaron Boone gets his first catch of the season, and it goes for a touchdown. We'll be right back here at Commonwealth Stadium at 7 to nothing, Kentucky. No matter where you travel in Kentucky, people know Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Not only do they know the company, they know their Farm Bureau Insurance agent. That's because Farm Bureau agents are hometown people. They're involved in your community. They're your friends. Call your local Farm Bureau agent today. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. bad things happen, call Kimi, the only Kentucky name in workers' compensation. Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance, making workers' comp work. I'm Lim Evans, here at BF Evans Ford. Our sales and service team has excelled in customer satisfaction, winning Ford's prestigious President's Award four years running because of the kind things our customers have said about us. You know, anytime it comes up in conversation, we're up front with other people about the quality of the service that we've gotten here at BF Evans Ford. We've purchased or leased about 70 vehicles over the years from BF Evans Ford. We're obviously a satisfied customer. Come see one of our friendly staff at BF Evans Ford, Highway 431 North in Livermore, Kentucky. I know what I want. I want. I want soft kisses. Romance. Spontaneity. Fun. Playfulness. Passion. 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 Excitement. A nice smile. A friend. A friend. Flirtation. Tenderness. Love. I want love. Find out what you want on private love. Well, to find out what the coach thinks about the game, be sure to tune into the Guy Morris Show every week here on 
the University of Kentucky Television Network. Check the local listings for the time in your area. That's the Guy Morris Show every week on the UK Television Network. So some excitement here in the early going as the Cats have struck first. Guy Morris's team is on the board, a 7-0 lead with 11-26 left to go in the first quarter. And Clint Ruth now tees it up. And back deep, Terrence Miner coming to the near side of the field. And Howard Jackson going over to the far side of the field. Jackson, who averaged 24 yards per return on 21 returns in 2001. And a 100-yarder against Nevada. High kick and deep. Terrence Miner takes it a few yards deep. And now they're going to hand it off. And this is Howard Jackson, who's all down from behind at the 17-yard line. Now the Kentucky special teams really getting downfield. Travis Slayton. Travis Slayton, the man downfield to put the hit on Howard Jackson after he takes the handoff. Look at look at what they, they've tried to do here. They just try to set up a little reverse early, and there you can see Dustin Williams coming in and making a great play, staying at home, keeping his head upfield, and just watching everything that took place. That's a year under his belt of experience is why he was able to stay there, in my opinion, guys, and, and know what was coming at him. I uh, beg your pardon. It was Dustin Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Canahan, Illinois. Utah takes over at his own 17. Jumper on the option, and he's going to get some yardage here. Across the 25 to the 26-yard line, he does not get out of bounds. Clock continues to run. Quintus Cumby over there to make the tackle, the senior out of Cleburne, Texas. Kentucky's defensive lineup, the ends are Vincent Burns and Otis Grigsby, Dwayne Robertson and Jeremy Caudill, the tackles, the linebackers, Ronnie Riley and Morris Lane. And the secondary, David Johnson, Leonard Perez, Eric Tatum, Mike Williams, Quintus Cumby. Gain was up to the 26. That was a gain of nine. It is second down and a yard to go. And it looked like the Cats jumped offside. I think Ellery Moore jumped. But here comes Jackson with a good gain. And he's out of bounds right at midfield. Biggest offensive play yet for the Miners. As they give it to the little guy, the sophomore out of Freeport, Texas. And forget the penalty, Leonard Burress drove him out of bounds. Well, anytime you have a front four, front seven, specifically the front four of Kentucky that likes to be as aggressive as they are, there's a couple of ways to keep them off guard. You can throw screens, you can throw some draws, and the other way is the quarterback controls it with his voice inflection. He just, obviously they, they learned what Lorenzen just did. He got that front four to jump off sides. And again, just like Kentucky did on the score a minute ago, it's a free play. Right up the midfield, the gain was 24 yards. The Miners have got it first and 10 at the 50. Chopper throwing incomplete. Chris Francis, the intended receiver, a redshirt freshman out of Houston, Texas. As you might expect on this Texas El Paso team, most of the players are from the state of Texas. They have some from California, but most of them from Texas, and I'll tell you, a ton of them out of El Paso. They got a lot of them. I tell you, it seems like they just keep pulling kids out of Texas every time you turn around, but it's a big state for football, and if Right now, defensively, that's what Kentucky wants. Second and 10, they're ahead of the count. They want to force Sharper to throw the ball and beat them throwing the ball. They're, they feel like they, if they can contain him and the running game, that they're going to be in this game. Sharper getting free and ends up getting about a yard out of the play, but that's about all. Claude Segal was in there to break that play up, and then David Johnson and Otis Grigsby came in to finish off the UTEP quarterback, but you'll see 31. Claude Segal here, come in, right there. He blew up, they're trying to run down the line option. Segal got in there, and he the court got to the quarterback and got beyond him enough that he he got in the way of the possible pitch area there. Quarterback had to pull it down. Good decision there by Sharper to be able to pull it down and not give a turnover. Gain of the yard, third down and nine. Sharper. Over to the far side of the field, he just throws this one away. Had a couple of receivers over there, but nobody open. So a good, good job by the Wildcats secondary. And Texas El Paso here will have to give it up. 
the next best thing to a sack is a coverage sack. That, although he didn't get sacked, he had quite a bit of time. He could not find anybody open. One of the big question marks, Rob, coming into the season was the Kentucky secondary. They had to grow up somehow, and they were hoping that the front seven could do that. If they can keep putting pressure and let this secondary grow, this defense is going to get better and better. Here's Bryce Benekos hunting for the second time this afternoon. High kick over to the far side. Derek Abney will not get a chance to run this one back, and it kicks out of bounds down near the 10-11 yard line. So the Wildcats will be backed up as far as they have been here in this first quarter. Penalty marker dropped back around midfield. And the initial indication is illegal procedure against the Miners. I would say they'll probably make him kick it again and see if he, if he's that good, if he can get it drop, get it down to the 10-yard line again, Rob. I, I have a hard time believing they'll they'll just let take the ball there. Absolutely. That kick was high. It's a good punt. And then as it hit the ground, it took a hard left out of bounds right down near the 10-yard line. Our next broadcast will be next Saturday, September 14th. take on the Indiana Hoosiers right here at Commonwealth Stadium. We will have it for you on a delayed basis. Check the local listings for all the action as Kentucky in that great border war with the Hoosiers of Indiana. That's coming up next Saturday here on the UK TV network. So Benekos puts a foot into it and he booms another one. Abney's going to have a shot at this one. Drops for the ball. Well, big scramble for it down to the 20 yard line. The Miners say they have it. That one kicked right off the chest of Derek Abney, and it was Cedric Click, a redshirt freshman out of Pomona, California, who got downfield and fell on it at the 21-yard line. What a tough break. Kentucky, their people are going to be in that ifing game now. They wanted him to have to kick the ball again. Abney's about the 12-yard line to, to field it. From what he's already shown you, you want that ball in his hands to get you 10 or 15 and give him some decent field position, not backed up. Looks like he just kind of lost it up there at the last second. Caught him on the face mask, as you can see on the replay. Took a minor's bounce, and they had the guy in the right place at the right time. It's at the Wildcat 21, first and 10 out of the eye formation as they send the man in motion. Chopper pump once. Nearly intercepted here at the near side of the field. I think it was Derek Tatum who came up there, the senior out of Cleveland, and almost had a chance to pick that one off. Well, you, you get a ball down here, you want to take advantage as quickly as possible, and that's what UTEP does here. They're going to come out, take a little quick, do a little play action pass. They're also, they did it on a second count. They got the defense off balance and give him a little bit of time. A great job here of closing on the ball by Tatum. That's something that you don't see every day at the cornerback position. He was beaten, but he was closing. He had some good makeup speed there to break up the play. Chopper pitching it back to Jackson, trying to turn the corner and can't find much running room. Antoine Huffman, redshirt freshman out of Jonesboro, Georgia, over there to knock him out of bounds. And that play right there was made by Sweet P. Barnes. Watch him. He gets upfield. He makes the quarterback pitch the ball. He, he's able to release off of his block and force him into the set boundary as the 13th, the 12th player on that Kentucky defense until until help comes here. If you can get those backs going lateral, moving moving horizontally across the field, back and forth instead of straight ahead against this defense, it should, could be a good day for the Kentucky defense all the way around. Gain of only a yard. It is third down and nine. High snap and Shopper trying to come right back up the middle is met by Mike Williams. The sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida, who had a big, big game against Louisville last week with a fumble recovery and an interception, comes up with another big defensive play here. Huge plays by Williams. Kentucky sitting there. You can see right there, Williams was sitting up in the line of scrimmage. They weren't sitting back from the start of it. They had a safety blitz going no matter what they had going on. Williams just was waiting there. Obviously, they did a little game plan. I would think that they had some tendency to run, want to run that little draw in this part of the field. Williams came in, made a great form tackle. Keith Robinson, a sophomore out of Odessa, Texas, with a 40-yard field goal attempt. It's long enough, and it's good. And the Miners are on the board with 8-10 left to go in this first quarter. So following the fumble recovery, 
Texas El Paso is able to capitalize. And with 8-10 to go in the period, it's Kentucky 7, Texas El Paso 3. Let's go down on the field now and check in with Drew Diener. Drew? Well, Rob, the last couple of plays there defensively for Kentucky, you did not see number 21, Derek Tatum. He came off on the sideline. He injured his knee during camp, and it was the same knee. He came down kind of awkwardly, but he did some backpedaling here in front of the trainer, and it looks like he's going to be back in next series, but did miss the last two plays. Thank you, Drew. And things now feeling a little bit better over on the Texas El Paso sidelines for Gary Nord's team. They had excellent field position at the 50-yard line, couldn't move the ball, then came up with a fumbled punt and are able to get three on the board on the 40-yard field goal by Keith Robinson. So it's a 7-3 game as we are not quite halfway through this first quarter. Oh, we've had some action so far, and if you're the players, like you say, you're happy to get the three points as, as Coach Nord being around and in this game long enough. He's happy with the points, just like a win's a win's a win, but he also knows that he, he's seeing the same thing that we are, that this defense right now is really dominating and shutting down everything they've tried to do. And I know that uh, there's people over there on that chalkboard right now, Rob, they're trying to figure a way to, to find some type of weakness. Here. Where's the weak link on this defense? Arliss Beach, Derek Abney have dropped back to return the kick. As Benekos puts his foot into the ball. Back to about the two-yard line, here's Abney. And again, finds running room. Boy, Bill, I tell you, he's amazing the way he can find his way down the field. Just a tough kid. I mean, brings it every play, leaves it on the field, is not afraid to take the lick. Mike Perez made the tackle for the Miners of Texas El Paso right at the 25-yard line. That's where the Cats will go to work. First and 10 with Jared Lorenzen at the controls on offense. Wildcats scored first on a touchdown pass from Lorenzen to Aaron Boone. It's the only touchdown in the game. Kentucky leads 7-3. Keep it on the ground, and somehow our two spinner finds some running room. After he was actually hit in the backfield, he got it just across the 30-yard line. Mark Doughty, the strong safety, a junior out of Haltom City, Texas, makes the stop. Just a little isolation off tackle play there. Penner does a good job of keeping his balance and knowing where he is, even though his head's down and grind, as you can see right there. Keeps his, keeps his head up, gets his head back up, gets a good game of five, almost six yards there. Just over the 30, you call it second down and five yards to go. We're midway through the first quarter of play here at Commonwealth Stadium, the home opener for the Wildcats as Penner goes in motion. And Lorenzen had time trying to hit Abney in the center of the field. It falls incomplete. Good coverage all the way around there by, by, the, by the UTEP secondary. The defense put just enough pressure. You can see right there where Jared's forced to step up in the pocket, and a good job he does of doing that instead of trying to break to the right or left. The linemen are taught. You usher them out. You take them to the right. You take them to the left. You step, step up. He did that, but the other guys were coming, and you got to give credit there to the UTEP def defensive secondary on on being good coverage on the Kentucky receivers. Third down play now, third down, five yards to go. Lorenzo looks to the near side, now he's gonna run with it. And he's got the first down all the way to the 40-yard line. Five-yard pickup as Lorenzo couldn't immediately find anyone open. Saw daylight, took off, picked up the first down. Tim Woodard, the rover, made the tackle. Uh, good job of Jared to see what it is and no one down in distance. This is something the coaches preach. Look, it's third and five. Let's move the change and come, come back this next series and see if we can't make something happen. Jared looked up. He, he saw that there was some coverage that was decent at that point. Hey, I can get this five yards. He took off and got it. And hey, here they are. They're moving the chains. They're first and 10 at the 40. First and 10, 40 yard line. Wildcats with a 7-3 lead as Lorenzo looks to the near side. He was hit just as he took the ball, and then Ernest Sims takes a hard lick as he holds in the pass and holds on right at the 45-yard line. Tim Woodard came up and really rocked Sims, but Lorenzo gets hit as well. Well, watch him hold some poise here. You got Rick, Rick Fetty, Fett coming in, and he gives a nice lick there to Jared, but Jared, watch him. He's got it. He sees Sims making his break. He stands in there. He, 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 as a quarterback, you know that stuff's coming, Rob. It's not what you like, but <laughs> you know it's coming. A good job there keeping his head downfield and following through and delivering the ball. A couple of hard go. hits, but the Wildcats still pick up five yards. Second down and five. Pinner with a pitch, finding his way, puts his head down and comes up to the 48-yard line. And that's what Artus Pinner is. He is a good, hard bull runner. 
Got a minor down on the field. It looks like it's Rick Fetty, the senior defensive end out of Corpus Christi. We just gave, I don't know if we just gave him the, the television jinx, talking about him putting good pressure, and down he went. I wasn't able to see it, but in the area it was, I'm sure it had to do with the getting clipped down there or blocked in that in that in that seven yard zone. There, it's kind of tough for those big guys. You got guys throwing at your knees and ankles all day. Fetty, 6'4", 245 pounds, and is now coming to his feet. And let's see if uh, we can pick up what happened here. As Pinner will bring right here the head as he down cuts and come in, right where he got the, we got the tail end. Looks like his own player kind of caught him right there. Might have been a shoulder or a little stinger. It looked like maybe even there at the as the way they they con make contact with uh, with each other. Fetty coming off the field under his own power. I believe Jeremy. Even who's now a junior out of El Paso, number 95, comes into the game at his defensive end position. It is at the 48-yard line after a gain of three. It is third down and two. So a big play for the Cats here with 5.28 to go first quarter. And they rely on Pitter to get it, and he does. And more, he breaks three down the sideline. Hold out of bounds down near the two-yard line. Penalty marker back down around the 40, and it looks like it could be holding. It is. I was watching it, and every time you, you can, well, probably if we get a chance to see the replay, you'll see it right here. It's tough. At the point of attack, you're always going to have the referee's eyes, and if on the replay, we should be able to see it. Watch up to your left of your screen, right here. The backup tight end, Jeremy Drobney, right here. Oh, actually, it's not. It's, it's number 45, the backup uh, fullback there. But he got caught up up top there with his hands. And when the defensive guy went to turn and get the separation, that's when the cloth showed to the referee. And being it that it was at the point of attack, they're going to call it every time. Ten-yard holding penalty against the Wildcats. Mike Campfe, number... 45 apparently called for the hold. Great block, just textbook blocking. And uh, you know, for those people out there that may be a first time they're watching, the holding happens every every down. It's a matter of if you get caught or not. And that comes from the spot of the foul, so that'll move it back to the 49-yard line. And actually, the Wildcats pick up a first down here as they have it in UTEP territory now at the minor 49. Lorenzen to Abney. Had a little trouble hanging out of that ball, but he hauls it in and gets a yard, maybe two out of it, before Brian Givens, the defensive tackle, a sophomore out of El Paso, comes up to make the stop for the Miners. Ball thrown a little behind him that time, Rob. It just it took him a minute to to get a hold of it. I don't. He usually catches those clean, even though he's got his pads on it. It, it just seems like he's having a hard time. I don't know after that punt or if he's he's thinking too much right now or what. He just needs to settle down and get back in the game and and do what he's been doing the last few years and just go go full speed. Barack Johnson has come into the Wildcat backfield now as they go in the two-back set out of the I formation. Got Boone and Cook to the right, and Abney comes here to the left side. Looks like Lorenzen changing his play at the line of scrimmage. And Alexi Bowingi also coming into the Wildcat backfield, a freshman out of Quebec, Canada. Bowingi carries it down close to the 46, come all high. Defensive end, a senior out of Lubbock, Texas, makes the stop. Well, they've marked it at the 47. It's a gain of only one. It'll be third down and eight yards to go for the Cats. So another big third down play. Clock running now with 3.41 to go first quarter. Kentucky with a 7-3 lead over Texas El Paso. As Lorenzen will work out of the shotgun. Got it away to Bogingi. He's picked up the first down inside the 30-yard line. Alex Ross made the stop for the Miners along with D.J. Walker, but the Kentucky offense coming up with a big 18-yard pass play from Lorenzen to Bogini. Good job there of Lorenzen. He's sitting in the pocket, gets a little pressure, steps up. Pocket's starting to collapse. Bogini's sitting on the... Out on his corner there doing his little flare route. He's a little check down. He did not have a pickup on the outside linebacker because he dropped back in coverage. By the time Jared had stepped up, he sucked up that coverage and he found Wingy just wide open in the, in the flats there. Great, great field vision by Lorenzen. Pinner back into the Wildcat backfield and exploding through a hole down inside the 20 to the 18 at 
should be enough for another first down. D.J. Walker on the tackle. They spot it right at the 18-yard line, a pickup of about a 12. It's a first down for the Wildcats. I'll tell you what, when you're a back, you love to look up and see Sykes and Chatelaine and Rollins busting them out, not to mention Hall and Huff. And when you can run between those tackles like that, Rob, as consistently as Kentucky has shown these, these first two weeks at this point and early in this first quarter, you're going to have a, a good running, successful running season. Line of scrimmage, the 17, the pitch to Pitter. Got a good block. But quickly, the minor defense converges on him and shoves him out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Again, the free safety, D.J. Walker, along with linebacker Robert Rodriguez, coming up to make the tackle. Well, the UTEP defense just had some good, good pursuit that time. Kentucky, they got out, man. They ended up bringing their corners up and their outside linebacker. No place really for Pinner to go once, once the guard kicked out the defensive end that had come up field there. R2 Spinner starting to rack up a little bit of yardage. Carried last week for 87 yards. He's now carried five times for 22 yards. Second down, seven yards to go. Ball just inside the 15-yard line of the Miners. Hard over the middle and hit hard is Aaron Boone right at the 10-yard line. And it was D.J. Walker who came up and really put a lick on him. Good hit by Walker. Better play by Boone. Boone sits there. He knows he's coming in there. Makes the catch. Looked up, saw it coming. Still. We've seen some hard licks dished out here. Ernest Sims took a hard lick a little bit earlier. Lorenzen's taken some hard licks. It's third down, two yards to go. Pinner, touchdown! Well, you talk about breaking tackles. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, hit again, and just kept on going. Nine-yard touchdown run by R2 Spinner. Second of the season, and the Wildcats extend the lead to 13 to three. Good solid blocking up front by Chatelaine and Hall on that right side. Sykes reached it. They had they had it blocked off the right side over there on about the, the six hole the whole way. Then Rollins pulled around. Penner stayed in the hole, and next thing you know, he shook a little tackle for the score. Sophomore Clint Ruth with the conversion, and the Wildcats. Now move out to their biggest lead of the afternoon as they have gone up by 11, 14 to three. Well, there you can see what we're talking about right there. With Rollins pulled around, he was on the left side, he pulled around and led up in the hole there and kicked out Weldon Cooks. Watch Penner right here, gets on his back, gets up in there, I'm sorry, kicked out, duck, and then it, there's Cooks there that he broke the tackle on and got right into the end zone. Here's a better angle to take a look at it there. All that happens, you got Rollins coming around and leading up in there for the, for the, for the block. Good job there of Penner keeping his feet. All right, let's check in with Drew Diener down on the field. Drew? Well, Rob, one thing I noticed when they came off the field after the touchdown was Keith Chatelaine was coming into the game. That's because Antonio Hall, who always plays tackle, was on guard on that play. If you go back and look at it, it looked like Antonio Hall may have been in one or two plays at guard, but definitely on that play at guard. Thank you, Drew. R2 Spinner, six rushes, 31 yards, and a touchdown now. Has a long run of 12 on the afternoon, so here in the first quarter with 1.48 to go. It is shaping up to be another good afternoon for the senior from Hopkinsville. Howard Jackson and Terrence Miner back to return the kick from Clint Ruth, who you might remember kicked off as a freshman, then was redshirted last season. Did not play last season, now comes back this year as a sophomore out of White House, Tennessee. Over to the far side of the field, this is Jackson. Quick little guy over the 20-yard line, comes up close to the 23, lost the football. Let's see, I think they probably have blown this dead. Still loose. 
and picked up and run into the end zone. Dustin Williams in there covering the play quickly for the Wildcats, but they've blown it dead at the 23-yard line. at it as you see Jackson come up the field and get stripped of the ball here. He's hit initially, looks like by Dustin Williams. Yeah, and look, I think 52 Justin Haydock was in there also. Those guys at this point have been everywhere on special teams. I think they're moving, they're trying to place the ball in certain spots on the kickoff and they're moving a few other guys around to obviously they're the, they're the head seekers down there. Here's Shopper on first and ten, and he's got his tight end over the middle, and he takes in a hard like Justin Hunt on the receiving end. Quintus Cumby really came up and uh, put the pad on him and knocked him down. Hunt, a big guy, 6'4", 230, out of Mesa, Arizona. The gain is up close to the 30-yard line. Call it a pickup of six, and it'll be second and four. They just ran the, little, the, the tailback right there out in the flat and brought their tight end underneath. It's a choice. Cornerback goes with the out. You come to the tight end as they did. If he stays in, you go to the flat. Jackson trying to find his way, bounces outside, has a first down, and Cumbie pulls him down from behind. And a frustrating play that time for the Wildcat defense because Howard Jackson was all bottled up here, Bill, at the line of scrimmage, and he just bounces out. Well, similar to Penner's play a little while ago when he gained five yards, he's, he's in there, he gets lost in the shuffle there, and there's a lot of blue and a lot of white in there, and nobody wrapped him up. He had the, the vision to see to bounce outside and get a make a big gainer out of nothing. All the way to the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of 14, a first down for the Miners. Only 43 seconds now left to go in this four, first quarter. 14 to three, Kentucky leading. Chopper. Oh, looked like a broken play there. He was running the option to the far side of the field, and he thought he had Howard Jackson going with him, but he didn't. And that is an unsettling feeling as a former quarterback. <laughs> I'll bet. When all you do, can do is look up and see nothing but big, the other guy's team right in your face. From looking at the replay, both backs went to the right, and I'm not so sure that it wasn't Sharper's fault there. He looked to make the option, and the only thing he sees is Seagal and Williams, and I tell you, that is definitely not what he wants to be doing right there, is taking on those guys. Clock running here with only two seconds, one second, and time will run out of the first quarter here at Commonwealth. We've played one period, and the Wildcats have the better of it. A touchdown pass to Aaron Boone, a touchdown run by R2 Spinner. After one quarter, it's 14 to three, Kentucky. being a part of people's lives. Now, we're a part of yours. We're Alltel, your new local phone company. Alltel, are you connected? to Paducah, from Evansville to Clarksville, People Plus provides staffing solutions. People Plus people are working 24-7, keeping business and industry moving ahead and on schedule. People Plus employees are learning new skills and working to improve their lives. People Plus is proud to be a part of a brighter future for our employees, our clients, and our region. With seven offices throughout Western Kentucky, People Plus can help. You can depend on People Plus. Can we depend on you? Has your doctor told you that you have serious back problems? Vax-D is a revolutionary way to treat disc-related back, hip, and leg pain without the risk and the complications of surgery. And the patented Vax-D process has been successful in treating almost eight out of 10 people with serious back pain. The computer-controlled Vax-D table gently decompresses the spine, taking the pressure off the discs and nerves, 
allowing them to heal. Call 888-515-2225. Head coach Guy Morris and the voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach, every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. You can ask your question on the UK Radio Network. From what I'm hearing, that call-in show got better this week, too. <laughs> it has a way of doing that. I tell you, everything got better. I think the boat got full this week, over, too. Over the past six days. <laughs> Start the second period. UTEP has it second down, 14 yards to go. Shopper over the middle and his pass taken in and quickly down at the 48-yard line into Kentucky territory at the 48. Chris Francis, the redshirt freshman out of Houston, pulls it in for 12 yards, but that is still shy of a first down by a couple of yards. I think UTEP's just trying to find their way right here. They went to a little drop back, which will, I, there was some question mark as to whether Sharper was really a good drop back passer or not. I think if nothing else they're trying to do is they've tried to get him outside, and they're seeing the Kentucky speed, defense does have speed. And, and Historically, Rob, you don't run sideways with speed. You run at speed if you want to do anything and break that first line of containment. So maybe they're, Gary Nord is taking a, a piece there and saying, well, let's just do a drop back pass and see if these guys can really bull rush and not get a little tired to give our guy a minute to throw the ball. From the 49, it's third down and three. Chopper. Oh, and what a hit. What a hit is leveled by Dustin Williams on Rovet Cleveland to deny him a first down. Let's see where they spot it. Just inside the 48-yard line, it's still going to be a yard and a half short. Like and with this hit, UTEP is denied. All I can say is what a year makes. Dustin Williams, a year under his belt. Last year, he was thrust in in the Louisville game and wasn't ready to play and got picked on a little bit throughout the year. He's beefed up through the, through the winter and then the preseason, and there you can see he's just waiting and reading the quarterback's eyes and made a great defensive play. And how they fake the punt. Benekos to drop back around his all 40-yard line. Penalty markers go down. They snapped it to the short man, Bell, and faked the punt, trying to maintain good field position and pick up a first and 10 here. I'll tell you, that's a little riverboat coming out in Gary Nord, and also, I think, a little reality in, in the fact of thinking that, hey, he's got the ball across midfield, and, he had it earlier and ended up settling for three. Let's see if we can't sneak one in here and try to get a score on the board and try to bring it to 13 to 10 before the half if their defense can hold Kentucky's offense and just didn't work for them. It's it be interesting to see what this call is. And I'm not really sure if it's going to be some type of offsides or if they're if they're going to if they just stopped the play because they wanted a measurement. Now they call for a measurement now as the ball is spotted right at the 46 yard line. They stretch out the chains here. This will be close. Let's see. Oh, just short. Just short. It goes over to the Wildcats. It was illegal procedure. Illegal procedure against Utah. All right, so you can see right there on the top of your screen there. But they were still moving in the, in the backfield when they snapped the ball. They tried to get up and get down and get it done as quickly as they could. They just did not quite have enough time there. And that was an old eyeball first down. It depends on where the ref, referee thought he got to and how he sets the ball down. Shane Boyd comes in at quarterback. He will work this series. The sophomore from Lexington, and he takes off on the first play and breaks it up the middle. All the way down to the 13. place. I had a chance to talk with the coordinator before the game, Brent Peace. He said, Shane Boyd will see action. We have a place in the in the offense for him. As they looked at the film last week. They, they, they self-scouted oh, themselves good. and saw they needed to make some change based on their offensive sets. They, when they were in three or four wides, they mostly threw the ball. They came out and said, hey, if we can get them to set up like that this week, then we're going to run the ball when they've got the nickel in there and we match up with them and look for Boyd to make a big play. And that's exactly what he just did. 
Well, Jared Lorenzen comes back to take over the controls as the ball is now down to the UTEP 12-yard line. Timeout called. As you saw Lorenzen come up to the line of scrimmage, we'd like to remind you to stay tuned for the Anthem Halftime Show, where we'll be breaking down all the first half action, highlights, game analysis, the Anthem Halftime Show, right here on the University of Kentucky Television Network. 14-3, the Wildcats leading the Miners of Texas El Paso here at Commonwealth Stadium with 13 minutes, 19 seconds left to go in this second quarter. And Bill, Kentucky is right back there now knocking on the door. Well, this is what they said. They, they, they wanted to get out of the gate early, the staff said. They, you know, we, we're kind of concerned that no matter what we've said and done and tried to keep up the, the team humbled and down the earth, that they're going to be feeling a little good. And they should after the first time in four years. But they also said that they wanted to be able to sit and try to put a few scores up as quickly as they could, Rob. And I tell you one thing I'd like to point out, I don't know if anybody was paying attention, but the biggest cheerleader after that play right there that Boyd made was number 22 coming up and, and slapping him on the head and telling him what a great job. And again, it's just a good, good compliment of, of, uh, in the, to this staff as well as these guys as far as the controversy that was there last year. And these guys, Lorenzen and Boyd being able to get along and, and for the best betterment of this team. Great relationship between the two. So following the 42-yard run, here's Lorenzen throwing to the end zone. Glenn Holt, freshman out of Opelika, Florida, on the receiving end. And I'll tell you, it was a perfect throw and catch. Glenn Holt was out there. 6'2", 175-pound freshman, and Lorenzen put it right in there to him. And probably runs about a 4-5, if I'm not mistaken. You can see, look at the separation right here at the end of this. Hard to see it on this angle. He got he got up. What they did was they ran the fade. They, the receiver's going to push inside a little bit. About the time the quarterback releases the ball, he's going to fade to the back pylon. Jared put the ball right on the money and laid it there where he could go get it. Ruth with the conversion, and the Wildcats extend their lead. We're still early in this second quarter of play, and Kentucky has now broken out on top. It's the Wildcats 21, the Miners of Texas El Paso 3. I've worked for Speedway in Kentucky for 16 years. I've lived in Kentucky all my life, and now I manage the Speedway in my hometown. The best part of my job is making people happy. I love what I do, and I love to see my customers smile. I'm real proud of what we do here in Kentucky, and I challenge anyone to do it better than we do. Speedway is Kentucky proud, and proud to support University of Kentucky football. We're on your way, the convenience stores of Speedway. low-fat milk with sweet acidophilus plus vitamins and such. And I figure anything that good for you inside has got to be good for your overall complexion. That's why I also bathe in it. New Southern Bell Good For You Milk. It's low-fat and does it taste good. You bet your sweet acidophilus. There's no place like home, and there's no place like your hometown pharmacy, Mayfair Pharmacy, where you're always treated like a friend and neighbor. In Owensboro, people count on Mayfair Pharmacy and Ed Rice for prompt, friendly service, personal attention, and free delivery. To feel better, count on Ed Rice and Mayfair Pharmacy, your hometown pharmacy, located in Owensboro's Mayfair Square, open seven days a week till nine. Kentucky crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium as the Wildcats now lead this game by 18 points, 21 to 3. 
exactly where they wanted to be, the staff did, and not get off to a slow start. Watch right here, Lorenzen, three-step drop, set up, look at the pylon, lay it out there, and look at Holt, look at the separation, look at the extension, the concentration on bringing that ball down, and as a freshman, you triply want to concentrate, Rob, and you don't get that opportunity very often. Let's go down to the field now, check in with Drew Diener. Drew. You know, that play was almost illegal. Harold Jackson was screaming in from the sidelines for Holt to back up off the line of scrimmage. Had he been on the line, it would have been an illegal formation. Jared Lorenzen spotted it too, screaming in to get off the line, something I'm sure Bill Ransdell did throughout his career at Kentucky. <laughs> that happens every now and then, Drew. You gotta just, hopefully you're, you're, you're into the game and not too much into the game that you can catch those things. Lorenzen is now 7 of 10 for 86 yards, and he has thrown two touchdown passes, the one just a moment ago to Holtz, and the other one earlier to Aaron Boone. Here's the kick, and Ruth drives it through the back of the end zone. So the Miners will have to start at their own 20-yard line. Now, just a few moments ago, Bill, Gary Nord took a chance with a fake punt, tried to get a first down, it didn't pay off, and bang, bang, two plays later, Kentucky has it in the end zone, and now this game is starting to get away from Utah. And if you're in the Kentucky camp, that's exactly what you want to see. It doesn't get much better. You have a, an opposing team's offense that makes a mistake. The defense is there to, 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 to pick up on the mistake. You put it back in your offense's hand, and you want to strike and grab that jugular rob as quick as you can, and that's what they just did. That shows a lot of maturity at this point to me with this offense as well as this whole system that they're just in their second year. First and 10 for Texas El Paso from the 20. Here's Shopper to the air, rolling and throwing to the far side, and it's a catch. Up at the 34-yard line, Terrence Miner on the receiving end. And it'll be a first down, a 13-yard gain. Uh, what do you do best? You, you do the best things as far as getting sharper outside is what the staff said they want to do. He's more comfortable getting out there and trying to make things happen than sitting back in the pocket. There you can see at the start of that replay, Williams, he had containment, but he, he took the wrong angle, still allowing sharper to get the corner and get that extra time he needed to make the completion. And Harold Jackson hit repeatedly in the backfield. He can't get back to the line of scrimmage. And David Johnson. The senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, comes up to finish him off. And, da and David's able to make this play because Mr. Robertson, right there in the middle of your screen, boom, he's, he's, he's hard to deal with, and their offensive guard lineman cannot get off of him. Opening the seam up and opening, just, it just takes everything out of position there, Rob, and it, 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 it opens up holes, and there's Johnson just to make an easy tackle. Loss is back to the 29-yard line, a loss of four. It is second down and 14. Wide receivers to each side of the field. As Shopper goes right back to the air and throwing here to the near side, and it's caught, taken in nicely, juggled for just a moment, but taken in by Terrence Miner down the near sidelines. And Antoine Huffman back there on the coverage, but Miner was downfield, and it's the longest offensive play of the afternoon for Texas El Paso, 45 yards. Tough play right there for the break for the defense. They've got Huffman, a freshman in there, trying to get him some, some experience and some reps. They're trying to make sure that, you got Tatum that went down early in the game for a couple of plays because that little recurrence knee injury. You want to get some experience. UTEP just took advantage of it. I don't know that they saw it and checked off or if they did, but Tatum's right back in the game. From the Wildcat 26, and Kentucky's defensive front almost jumped offside, and apparently they did come across and touch. They made some contact there. Once you jump, you know, you can get back, but you can't come across and make any contact. And that'll be frustrating for them. If, if you're going to make contact, you want to knock somebody on the rear end. Five-yard penalty, so first half. Gives Shopper a chance to come over to the First far sidelines and have a word with his head coach. He's going to move the ball down to the 21-yard line, where the Miners will have it now. First down and five yards to go. 11:46 left to go, second quarter, and Kentucky on top of Texas El Paso here in Lexington, 21 to three. But the Miners, after a 45-yard pass play to Terrence Miner, are now driving. Shopper throwing to the end zone. 
the end zone. It was hauled in. Pass taken in by Chris Francis. The freshman out of Houston, Derek Tatum, back there on the coverage, but he was out of bounds. Good call by, by Nord. I'm sitting here thinking, if I'm you, it's first and five. You've got a waist down. Go to the end zone and see if you can't get a big play immediately. Kentucky's defense is out of sync a little bit here. They go back to the left side. It's the short side of the field as much as anything because Tatum had already come back in for Huffman a couple of plays ago. It's a closer, it's an easier and a closer throw for Sharper. They tried to get it, it just couldn't bring it down inside inside the, uh, the white stripes. Second down and five out of the I formation. Jackson. Inside the 15, he's got the first down and then is hammered from behind by Mike Williams. The sophomore from Tallahassee coming up with a hit. Going to be an 11-yard gain, though. It's a UTEP first down. Watch right here. Williams comes up field, takes on the blocker, keeps his outside shoulder free, learning from a, a play, couple of plays back. Does not give up, turns around, comes back, and ends up making the key tackle. Great hustle and effort by Williams and not just stopping after the first part of his job was done. First down and 10. It is spotted just outside the 10-yard line, so they can still get a first down right down close to the goal line. Chopper batted down to the line of scrimmage. And let's see who was able to get up and get a hand on it. I think it was Dion Holtz. It was. The redshirt freshman out of Warren Central who played under Ricky Wood. Bring up second down and 10 yards to go. See if we can see number 64 get a hand on this one. Total three stepped up, dropped. They're trying to throw the slant. Up top, you can see right there, he's cutting inside. It's one of those things there. Great play by Holtz and being able to get his hand up in the field of vision and to knock the ball down and take the pressure again off the... the and to knock the ball down and take the pressure again off the, the defensive secondary of Kentucky. Second and 10, Chopper. And he just throws this one away. As the Cats had the heat on, he saw number one, Mike Williams coming in there. Deion Holtz. Pressure on the play from Back in there again, applying pressure. It looked like they were trying to set up a little screen and talking with staff a little bit earlier. They said that one of the things that they were going to do is they, it, they had figured that UTEP was going to run a lot of screens if they could. They're a screening team and looked like they were setting it up. I don't think they, they gave it a three count there, though. Robbie looked like he was running for his life from the start. Here's a big play, Bill. Third down and 10 from just outside the Wildcat 10-yard line with the Miners trailing 21-3. Again under pressure, got it away over the middle. And Miner kicks it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Fine play by the senior Terrence Miner hauling it in and finding his way to the goal line. And on top of that, a great, great call as the pressure was coming, but that time Shopper in the UTEP offense had it solved. Yeah, I'm really impressed right now with the poise that this UTEP team is showing. You, you keep this defense that Kentucky has, or any defense that's very aggressive off balance by changing your, changing your cadence, by running some draws and running screens. They just attempted a screen and it didn't work. They came back to the flanker screen and held it just a little longer, got exactly what they wanted, and got the score out of it. A huge play for the UTEP offense. Keith Robinson with the conversion, and the Miners fight back. 10.43 left to go here in the second quarter. It's Kentucky 21, Texas El Paso 10. Turn me up, come feel the joy all around Each generation I stop They bet their own kind of sound You bet your own kind of groove Maybe you can't sleep, it's your mood Gotta take that leap, you can lose
here's a new spin. 0% APR financing on every 2003 Chevy. Uh-huh, the new ones. Get 0% APR on every 2003 Chevy truck. That's one solid deal on every 2003 Avalanche. Trailblazer, S10, Suburban, and Tahoe. Get in for 0% on the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. New 2003 Chevys, 0% APR at your local Chevy dealer. At Owensboro Mercy Health System, we know that the birth of a child is one of the most joyous events in a family's life. That's why we've designed the New Life Birthing Center with you in mind, combining the comforts of home, private rooms and baths, along with a highly trained, caring maternity team, so you'll have a relaxed, family-centered birthing experience. Let us help you welcome your baby at the New Life Birthing Center, where we celebrate the miracle of new life each and every day. I'm Lim Evans, here at BF Evans Ford. Our sales and service team has excelled in customer satisfaction, winning Ford's prestigious President's Award four years running because of the kind things our customers have said about us. I've bought eight or ten vehicles here over the past year and a few years, and the service has been great. BF Evans helped us establish the credit history where others in the car leadership industry wouldn't. Come see one of our friendly staff at B.F. Evans Ward, Highway 431 North in Livermore, Kentucky. Rob Bromley along with Bill Ransdell back at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington where Kentucky leads the Miners of UTEP 21-10 here in the second quarter. Let's check in down on the field with Drew Diener. Well, I'm down here with one of the stars of the music industry at the local tank, Kevin Richardson from the Backstreet Boys. You make it down to a lot of these games. I try to, as many as I can. You actually played some football in your, in your career. Since I was seven, little league, all the way up through high school. Now, when's the, the you guys are working on an album right now. When's that next album coming out? We're working uh, to have it ready the beginning of the year. So, beginning of the year, springtime, that's what we're shooting for. We're splitting time between here and L.A., huh? Yes, sir. Have fun down here. Listen. As much as I can. Well, it's good to see you back here, Kentucky. Thank you. Good to be here. Kevin Richardson of the Backstreet Boys. Rob, back to you. Thank you, Drew. And those Kentucky football fans come from everywhere, don't they, Bill? And you know, well know that. Some of the best fans in the country right here in the state of Kentucky. Hard to find any better, and it's always good. It, there's, some, there's always a draw for those fans to just get back home to your roots. It's good to see that. Here's Benekos with the kick. Abney over to the far side of the field, and here at the near side comes Arliss Beach. Beach with the ball over the 25, and... Dives forward up to about the 29-yard line. The freshman out of Ashland, 6 feet, 185 pounds. Jared Lorenzen brings the Kentucky offense back onto the field. And the big guy is 7 of 10 for 86 yards. He's thrown for two touchdowns. And the Wildcats with a 21 to 10 lead. Well, he's starting to settle in, and so is that offense. I think Jared started one for four at, that, at the beginning of the game since then. It, it's been pretty close to perfect. It's good to see that they're as comfortable as they are right now. Arliss Beach in the Wildcat backfield. He stays on the field as Tommy Cook comes in motion here to the near side. Lorenz into the air. And throwing it downfield, but Abney, along with Ernest Sims, were way short. I think he was trying to get the ball to Sims. They had a little a little crossing route out there where Sims was going to take it up and basically end up doing a, a fade in the middle of the field where they're just doing a little working up the sideline there, and he just kind of got his feet tangled up and, and couldn't quite couldn't get his balance back. Second down and 10 yards to go. Abney out of the left. Cook comes here to the near side. Rock Johnson at Arliss Beach. Now in the two-back set, the eye behind Lorenzen as he directs Cook over to the left side. Beach hit at the line of scrimmage and does well to get to the 32-yard line. Going to be a pickup of about three. It'll be third down coming up at seven yards to go. Tim Woodard, the rover back, who has been in on a lot of hits, coming up to make the stop for Texas El Paso. Big play here for the Kentucky offense as far as growing up third and eight. Backed up a little bit. What are you going to do? Three receivers. Cook. Boone and Abney come here to the near side, and now they send Cook in motion. Third down and long. Beach. He's got the first down. Still going. And just across midfield into UTEP territory, down to the 49-yard line. Rick Fetty 
Senior out of Corpus Christi, who's back in the game now after being injured early on, drives him out of bounds. Good play here. Kentucky just run it, taking a, a page out of UTEP. A little running screen, I call it. The, the back is running out. He's on a flare. It's a, he's going to get the ball right out of the backfield from the very start. The lineman released immediately, got out in front of him, and gave him just what he wanted. A big gain, and then Beach made the rest happen. Gain of about 20. First and 10 Wildcats down to the UTEP 49-yard line. We push him, pull the guard. Lorenzen throwing deep. 49 yard touchdown play to Chris Bernard. Jared Lorenzen to Chris Bernard, the junior out of Mission Viejo, California. Weldon Cooks was the man who was back there, and Bill, he just had him flat beat. Well, that took a while. Jared couldn't find him for a second. He broke open so quick. Bernard had to wait on the ball just a minute and gave Cooks a chance to make up a little bit, but a great play. I mean, again, talking with the staff before the game, the question was, are, are you going to run the ball like you did last week? Yes, but we are going to throw it more. We think we can exploit a few things on the UTEP defense, and obviously that's what they're doing in the first half. They got it in the end zone for the fourth time this afternoon. And the conversion by Ruth. And the Wildcats go out in front, 28 to 10. We've got 9.35 left to go until halftime. We'll continue with more action from Commonwealth Stadium after this. financing for 60 months on Ford Explorer. That can mean interest savings over $8,400. Explorer has a smoother ride with a rear independent suspension. Roomier with a full flat third row seat. 0% financing for 60 months. Ford authorized clearance now. More and more, Kentucky is turning to CHA Health because access is easier than ever. CHA Health offers one of the largest choices of participating doctors and hospitals in our state, backed by local people who are committed to giving you great service. CHA Health is working every day to support you and your community. If you haven't made the switch to CHA Health, remember... Change is good. CHA Health, your kind of people, your kind of care. for our all-tell long-distance connection play of the game. And we saw just a moment ago Jared Lorenz into Chris Bernard. Little play-action pass that held the linebackers inside. Everybody's bunched up except Bernard, and he, there he does. Goes, gets downfield, gets a few steps behind him, and the rest was easy. All, all Jared had to do really there, Rob, was worry about not overthrowing him. That's our all-tell long-distance connection play of the game. Jared Lorenzo now 9 of 13 for 154 yards, and since starting the game just 1 for 4, he has gone 8 for 8. He's hit his last 8, and 3 of them have gone for touchdowns. And Kentucky's out in front now, 28-10. Kick by Ruth. End over end, and he gets a good foot into this one. Jackson at about the goal line. Penalty marker goes down. I think we're going to have a holding call here as Jackson comes across the 15 to about the 18-yard line. Looked like Muhammad Abdullah did a great job of coverage there, and they could not stop and block him. He kept fighting. He fought through two different guys, and I think that's where the, the hold took place. And our referee this afternoon is Thomas Ritter. Let's take, get another look at yeah, it. Take here. a look. Watch to your left Turn ear. The right there. Holding on the receiving team. He's fighting That's and fighting. Position. They're Three yanking ball. him down from behind. You'd think he's a running back right there. And Abdullah doing a good job to stay with the play and still actually get in there and great job. Make some contact and uh, make the tackle. But the holding call will march it back deep into UTEP territory, back inside the 10, all the way back to the 8-yard line. A terrible field position for the Miners here to start this series as they find themselves down again now by 18 points, 28-10. Miner in motion to the near side. And Schopper trying to keep it on the option. 
And Jeremy Cottle, big number 68, right there to meet him. Cottle and Grig Grigsby in there also. They, they're figuring it out. It's just taking them some time. They've not faced any option. Watch right here. Cottle fights off. You're not going to block that big guy just trying to get into his legs. He squats over 700 pounds. So a guy playing 280 pounds is not going to bring him down unless you get in there and what they call crab block him and just keep bear crawling on him. Great play by Cottle. Chopper is 6 for 12 for 87 yards and a touchdown. He's also carried six times for just six yards. This is second and 10. And the tight end holds it in, brings it up to about the 15-yard line. That's Justin Hunt, junior out of Mesa, Arizona. Gets about seven yards on the play. Morris Lane, the linebacker, senior out of Naylor, Georgia, coming up to make the stop for the Wildcats. Ball mark just shy of the 15-yard line. And it will be third down, third down and four yards to go. Good play there by Sharper. Did a little, the little counter, the, the little bootleg out to the flat. Put, put Seagal in a position either cover the tight end coming out or get to us, and Lane wasn't quite ready enough. Crowd coming to life. Big play here for the Miners as far as field position is concerned. They keep it on the ground at Jackson, trying to sweep the outside, and he can't get it because David Johnson, David Johnson was in there quickly to hold him down. Over at the far side of the field, it is going to be short of a first down. Kentucky comes up with a big defensive play. Great vision right here by the tailback, Hal Jackson, bouncing it out. The big guys inside called on Robertson. They bottled everything up and forced him out. Again, Kentucky's speed played a big part there. He tried, thought he could outrun him to the sideline to the stake to get the first down, and Johnson heads up play and, and coming up and doing a good form tackle and taking him down before the pylon. But Echo is punting from his own five. Abney hangs on to this one. Cuddly marker goes down. Abney breaks free at the far sidelines. Cuts it back inside the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. But we could have another holding penalty coming up here. Brian Oates makes the stop for Texas El Paso, but I think this play is going to come back. Looks like it. The flag's thrown in the area of where... Abney started to play and, and where he was getting a little assist on making the first move and it, it's not what you want. It's tough sometimes not to have those penalties this early in the season. I, I know that Coach Nelson, the special teams coach, is just beside himself right now thinking about it. Procedure penalty against the Miners and illegal block in the back against Kentucky. Now apparently we've got two penalties. The calling a procedure oh. penalty because we do have another penalty flag dropped down here to our right at around the 18-yard line, a procedure penalty against Texas El Paso and an illegal block against Kentucky. Well, then that, that should offset, and they should replay the down, I would think. An illegal formation on the offense during the return, block in the back on the receiving team. Those penalties offset. We will re-kick. Mr. Ransdell, you are absolutely right. Watch right here. Here's Abney. He's made his move. Tough call. Caught him right just on the backside of his shoulder pad. Uh, do you call that or not? The play's gone. It's not It's not springing it. Obviously, the, the referee there felt like it mattered, and uh, we won't ever get into second-guessing the refs. <laughs> but Echoes will kick it over, and this time now he's standing just inside his five, kicking from the same spot as they replay the down. This kick not quite as long. Abney fair catching it, and he holds this one in in Kentucky territory at about the 46. Just a great heads-up play there, Rob. I mean, he, he had a 15-yard, 20-yard sprint just to get to the ball, but he saved probably 10 or 15 yards by the ball not hitting him back. The Cats get it with good field position, Bill. They'll spot it down to the 47-yard line. And we've still got a ways to go in this second period. Six minutes and 56 seconds on the clock. Kentucky with a 28 to 10 lead. And let's see if Lorenzen and company can add to that lead here on this series as they take over with outstanding field position. Mike Campe and Arliss Beach in the Wildcat backfield. As you saw Beach go in motion and they hand it off up the middle as it's taken by Campe. Senior out of Cincinnati. 
Six feet, 210 pounds. And he busts it down into UTEP territory. Dan Kerr, the right side defensive tackle, the junior out of Odessa, Texas, made the stop. From the 49-yard line now, after the gain of four, it's second down and six yards to go. Good play there to break the tendency. Two wide outs, sent your back out. Good passing formation. They ran the ball up inside. Pinner in campaign out of the Wildcat backfield. Out of the eye. Pinner straight up the middle. Pulls his way forward down inside the 47. That will still be well shy of a first down. It'll be third down coming up. DJ Walker, the free safety, along with Kamar Jackson, the will linebacker, making the stop for the El Paso defense. They've marked it just shy of the 46-yard line. It's third down and a long three yards to go for the Wildcats. They send wide receivers to the each side of the field. Look for the mismatch here. Lorenzen out of the gun, looks here to the near side. He's got Abney, and that's a first down. Takes a hard lick right at the 35-yard line, stays inbounds. Tim Woodard, again the guy coming up and delivering the hard lick, but it's a Kentucky first down at the 35-yard line. Well, Kentucky split Penner to the wide to the right side and took the cornerback out there with him, matching Abney against the rover, Tim Woodard. Most offenses are going to like that matchup. Your rover is your strong safety, usually not as quick or fast as far as coverage to be able to stay up with Abney. By taking Pinner out, though, he pulled the corner and, and they set that matchup up on paper and put it on the field there. First and 10 from the 35. Lorenzen right back to the air. Shook a tackle, got it away, but incomplete. Trying to go to Glenn Holt there, but a little bit too much pressure as he had to unload that one quickly. He's just trying to get rid of the ball there, Danny. He shook the one tackler, like I said, he ducked him a little bit, did a little dipsy doodle. I think we're going to be able to see it if we can get the replay up here. Watch right here. Coming up the middle, linebacker delayed stunt. The guard doesn't come over and pick him up. Lorenzen, whoop, little Ole. There he comes. He just wants, just looked over, threw it over, over his head, got it out of bounds. He felt the pocket collapsing. Good heads up play by Jared. So Second down and 10 yards to go from the minor 35. Got Bernard and Holt split out to the left, out of the eye formation with Campe and Pinner. Looks like Lorenzen now possibly changing his play for a second time. Down to three seconds on the play clock, and Pinner takes the handoff and is thrown for a loss here in the backfield as the Miners quickly had that covered by Cabal High. Defensive end, the senior out of Lubbock, Texas, Robert Rodriguez, the linebacker also getting in there. Loss is going to be back to the 38-yard line. Loss of three. It'll be second down now. Or I beg your pardon. Third down and 13 yards to go. That last play didn't go anywhere. They tried to check it off and just couldn't quite get comfortable. The staff was hollering for a timeout because they saw the uncomfortability. They just couldn't get it in. Again, two wide receivers to each side of the field here on third and 13. Under a rush, down goes Jared Lorenzen back at the 48-yard line. Tamar Jackson, the Will linebacker, a senior from Midland, Texas. Going to be a loss of 10. Kentucky trying to get a face mask penalty here, but uh, no one's listening. Uh, there, there's what Jared was asking for. That was Rick, Rick Fetty who had the initial pressure on him there, number 94. Yeah, as he came by, he just kind of jumped, and Jared did a good job of getting him off his feet. His hand just kind of raked over him a little bit, and good job by the officials of a no-call there. Here's the punt by Pakalak. Aaron Givens back to return it for the Miners, but he won't get a chance as this one is going to kick down inside the five-yard line, and pretty good effort there by Tommy Cook to try to get down to it, but he couldn't quite get to the football. It goes into the end zone, and they'll bring it back onto the 20-yard line. 341 left to go here in the first half with Kentucky leading Texas El Paso 28-10. Hey, it's been quite a while looking at looking at this daggone punter of back like he does a great job of being able to get some hang time and give them time to cover. For live chats, the latest scores, stats, live total casts, and more, all you have to do is visit www.ukathletics.com, your school's official athletic website. From the 20-yard line, first and 10 for UTEP. Quickly over the middle, it's broken up. 
Pass intended for Terrence Miner, but a host of Wildcats right there led by Justin Haydock, the inside linebacker. Let's check in down on the field now with Drew Diener. Well, one injury up to tell you about, Rob. Dustin Williams, second string inside linebacker, was carted off the field a few minutes ago. He took a helmet to his right arm. His X-rays are being taken right now. They'll have an update for us a little bit later. Thank you, Drew. Following the incompletion, it's second and 10 from the 20. Clock showing three minutes, 37 seconds left until halftime. Kentucky with a 28 to 10 lead. Big hole for Jackson. And when this little guy gets some running room, he can hurt you. He's over the 35 yard line up to about the 36 before Derek Tatum finally knocked him down. It's a 16 yard run. This is a guy, Bill, who has run for 356 yards in his last three games going back to last season. He's a tough runner. They just tried to go off tackle there to the right side of their offensive line. And stayed with their blocks he did a good job of reading it and the, the cutback hole is what was there he saw it he cut it back across the green because the offensive line and the aggressiveness of the defensive line of Kentucky had washed on down to the to the point of attack Jackson now with 51 yards rushing on the afternoon and Kentucky almost jumped and then I think the miners jumped offside long count I think it was tight end Justin Hunt on the right side of the line who may have jumped off let's see Whoever it was, it was a good job by Sharp for of being able to mix up his cadence. Ball. ball starts on the offense. 10-yard penalty remains for set. Five-yard penalty will move it back to the 31. First now there's Kentucky almost jumping, but then look at the look at the left side of your screen, and you'll see Hunt move right there. A long count, and the junior from Mesa, Arizona jumps just ahead of the play. Back to the 31 now, it's first down and 15 yards to go as we hit the three minute mark here in the second quarter. And now whistles all over the field. And Rovan Cleveland comes on from the far side of the field and UTEP wants a timeout. So Gary Nord at this point on first and 15 and just under three minutes to go decides to talk about it. To find out what the coach thinks about the game, be sure to tune into the Guy Morris Show every week here on the University of Kentucky Television Network. Check the local listings for the time in your area, the Guy Morris Show, each week throughout the season here on the UK Television Network. The Kentucky Wildcats lead the Miners of UTEP 28-10 here in the second quarter. We've got two minutes and 59 seconds on the clock. Rob Romley along with Bill Ransdell. Drew Diener is down on the field, and I would think that Guy Morris has got to be happy the way both his units have played so far here in this home opener, Bill. No question about it, Rob. They've got to be excited. I guess the big thing they'll have is the challenge will be to go into into the half here with a potential 28 10 or 17 lead i feel like that in talking with the staff they thought that they may take them a little longer to get into a, a groove and offensively it has happened just the opposite they've jumped out pretty quick here and some of it has to do with the defense giving them good field position early but they've still taken advantage of the opportunities that they have the big challenge again for this team to take the next step will be coming out the second half and seeing if they can take another step toward continuing to improve their offense as well as their defense continuing to put pressure. And as you look at John Shopper there, he brings his offensive unit up to the line of scrimmage. We've got Rovan Cleveland and Matt Austin who have come into the minor backfield. Howard Jackson has gone out. Cleveland in at fullback. Matt Austin, a freshman out of El Paso, Texas, coming at tailback as they set in the I formation. First and 15 from the 31. Chopper had time down the middle of the field, incomplete. 
What is Cumbie back there on the coverage? Tight end Jonas Crafts, the intended receiver downfield. Incomplete, it will bring up second and 15. I would not be surprised to see them go back to some option here or something inside, something to keep the clock moving. The last thing Nord wants right now is to give this ball back to Lorenzen and this offense as hot as they've been in this first half. Wide receivers split out to each side of the field. UTEP with 165 total yards here in this first half. Second and 15 from the 31. And now whistles all over the field just at the snap of the ball. They got a little movement on the left side of, of the offensive line. It looks like it was the left tackle, Ariel from Famiglia. Familigi. Familigi, thank you. I missed that one. Well, they, <laughs> one of the men of the All start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remain second half. Now, that's not what they wanted. They, they were attempting to run the speed option down the line there, and... They had changed the cadence, trying to get a, a free five yards back. And I think the bottom line there is, again, like we just touched on, they're just wanting to get out of the half, I think. A couple of penalties now on this drive, and it's second and 20 back at the minor 26. Still 2.50 on the clock here in the quarter. Shopper to the far side of the field and incomplete. And minor was still running down the sidelines. Ball thrown well behind him. Leonard Barres, the junior out of Memphis, Tennessee, back there on the coverage. So it falls incomplete. It brings up third down and long yardage, third and 20. They don't hurt themselves here, Rob, if they throw the ball now. I mean, they're gonna, Kentucky's going to get the ball back with, with uh, their timeouts, two timeouts left anyway. They might as well throw it here and try to get the first down and try to keep the ball away from Kentucky the rest of the half. Utah just one of six on third down conversion, and it's third and long here. Third down, 20 yards to go. Miner out of the right, along with the tight end, Jonas Crafts. That's Miner in motion. Chopper got away. Over the 35 to the 40, takes a hit as he comes out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. That is still about three or four yards shy of a first down. Irvin Flowers was the man who finally drove him out of bounds. They did not quite contain him the way they wanted to. They were able, with the long yardage of 20 yards for a first down, to keep him from getting the first down. Sharper there, I think, Rob, just made a real critical error in not understanding where he was on the field. He had a chance to fight for a couple, three more yards and at least stay in bounds, keep the clock moving. Well, they don't get the first down. Now that makes a big difference as far as field position is concerned here because Abney is standing all the way back at his own 20-yard line as Bryce Panekos again will punt it away. It's a high snap. Back inside the 20. Panekos tried to kick it, gets little foot into it. It kicks down at the 20-yard line, and it's touched at the 22. <laughs> Not what you want if you're Gary Nord of the UTEP. Team. He, he's wanting to get out, as I said a minute ago. I feel like he didn't want to give the ball up down here. He didn't want to give this offense of Kentucky right now the way they're clicking. They're hitting on all cylinders a chance to throw it. You definitely don't want to have a bad snap and give it to him with only 20 yards. A loss of 21 yards on the muff punt. You saw number 50, Ray Fontaine. Freshman out of Ontario, Canada, who was coming in there and getting the heat on Venecos and Running, he tried to turn and kick the football and just could not get much foot on it. So it's at the 23-yard line of the Miners. Lorenzo at quarterback, 2.23 left on the clock in Kentucky for the golden opportunity now to add to the lead. Big rush, Lorenzo got it away incomplete to Abney. Wow. Boy, they came at him that time, didn't they? Oh, they came, and I tell you, if he gets it to him, there is a couple of white shirts, but there's three blue shirts just leading the, the escort into the end zone untouched. Tim Woodard, the rover, was the guy who was bringing the heat on Jared Lorenzen. It'll be second down and 10 at the 23. Clock stops with 219 on the clock. Lorenzen now with three straight incompletions. Rock Johnson into the Wildcat backfield. He's set to the right along with Pinner who takes the handoff. Trying to break it to the outside, inside the 20. 
and slips his way forward to about the 13-yard line, D.J. Walker. The man who finally knocked him down. Good job by R2 Spinner. He's close to the first down sticks, and Bill, I think it is enough for a first down. I think he got it by about a yard. He, watch this right here. Just going to be an off tackle. It's a stretch. Watch Jared have to reach. Oh, my goodness. Spinner's, they're taking it wide. They've got man on man. Great job of holding the block there by Hall and giving Penner a chance to get around the corner there. Penner could have gone out of bounds right there, guys, and that's a key thing. He knew where the sticks were. He's planted, got upfield, and got the first down with the lead. Well, they marked it to the minor 12-yard line. It is first and 10. Penner puts the head down, busts his way inside the 10-yard line, down close to the 7. Lamar Jackson, the Will linebacker, senior out of Midland, Texas. Made the tackle for Texas El Paso. And a timeout called by the Wildcats. Well, the hard running of Art Deuce Penner. And you know what Coach Guy Morris says about him, Bill? He's all elbows and thigh pads. That's what you see coming at you when you're a defender. Well, that last play, again, they ran the same exact play. They, they, they've been looking at it now almost two quarters, and they've had a chance to find, find some weaknesses. They went off tackle again, and... The biggest thing there I saw was Penner. He jumped through, he got hit, he gave a dead leg, like I remember years, and Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith, some of the better running backs in the history of the game, did it. He jumped over and caught one foot and still got three extra yards. That's just great effort and good balance of, the, of running for, by Penner. Our next broadcast will come your way next Saturday, September 14th. The Wildcats remain right here at Commonwealth Stadium as they'll host the Indiana Hoosiers in that annual border war. Check the local listings for the time in your area. We'll have it all for you right here on the UK Television Network. R2 Spinner now with 10 rushes for 49 yards and a touchdown on the day. As you look at part of this sun splash crowd here at Commonwealth, got to have a you got to have a hat on, some sunscreen, and a, perhaps a towel under the hat wouldn't hurt. Nice towel there. That would feel good for us up here right now, quite honestly. And we're in the shade. <laughs> I'll tell you, most of this crowd of better than 60,000 is in the bright sunshine. Second down, five yards to go from the minor seven. Lorenzen throwing into the end zone to a wide open Chase Hart. The senior from Danville gets his first touchdown of the season. And Kentucky has extended the lead to 34 to 10. Wow. That's he, a lot of points. He had his choice, too. You had Harp sitting back there in the back part of the of the corner of the end zone, and then there was also Johnson, Rock Johnson, sitting in the flat, wide open. Breakdown, obviously, on the UTEP part and not being able to cover him, but you got to give give some credit there. It's a good play-action pass and a good job. Penner's been effective, and when you have a running game that's effective, you can get some play-action passes working for you. And the conversion by Clint Ruth is through the uprights. We saw what Taylor Begley could do last weekend in Louisville, and Ruth has done the job so far here this afternoon. With the conversion, the Wildcats extend the lead now to 25. 132 left to go here in the half. It's Kentucky 35, Texas El Paso 10. Let's go down on the field to Drew Diener. Well, it's been a good 24 hours for Chase Hart. Last night, his dad coaching Danville to win over Boyle County, breaking a 47-game win streak against her crosstown rivals. He gets his first touchdown of the season right here today. So I'm sure the Hart family smiling ear to ear around Commonwealth Stadium. Well, that's for sure. What a big, big win that was for the Danville Admirals last night, bringing that 47-game winning streak to an end. Well, if you're an admiral, you love it. You love being a part of it. And as far you know, as a fan, I was wanting to see him get it. I didn't really care who they were playing. It'd be nice to see someone here in the central Kentucky area have that record. I'm sure there's a lot of Trinity fans out there that are tickled that it's not gone, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, uh, Chuck Smith, a former Wildcat himself, what a job he's done at Boyle County. Phenomenal job, and uh, again, it's just it's great for football all the way around the, the state as a whole. A minute and a half remaining here in the first half, and Ruth again to kick off. <laughs> And Richard Muthery back. He's now gone to the far side of the field, over here to the near side of the field. They have Jackson. And this is Muthery. Right up the middle of the field over the 25-yard line. And the blue-shirted Wildcats converge on him and haul him down. 
Arliss Beach down there on the tackle. I also see Fontaine getting up from the pile. Raymond Fontaine, a freshman out of Ontario. And they've marked it right at the 29-yard line following a 22-yard return. You know, Rob, I'm as impressed with this special teams of Kentucky as I've been in a long time. I don't know. We've talked about it off and on, off the air. That their coverage on kickoffs, punts, all of it is right where it needs to be, and they're, they're not letting anything really get out other than the one you know, the kick last week against Louisville. First down and 10 yards to go now from the 29, and they're going to run a reverse here to Miner, and it's going to blow up in their face. Claude Segal out of Evanston, Illinois, the sophomore safety man. It's going to be a loss of 10. A Gary Nord trying a little razzle-dazzle, and it does not work at all. Trying to find a, a, a free cheap one before the half, if you will, and <laughs> doing anything he can. That started when Grigsby got upfield. He, he, he stayed home. They practiced it in, 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 in practice all week, the little reverse. They, they fooled Otis a few times. He's looking for it. He forced him outside, although he's the, back with, the receiver was a little quicker. He forced him out and got a little help from Seagal. Lost back to the 19-yard line where it's second down and 20. And you can bet now that the Miners just want to get into that locker room. They keep it on the ground, give it to Jackson. He goes nowhere. Seagal in there along with Vincent Burns, Sweet Pea, the sophomore from Lake Park, Georgia, on the stop. And I wouldn't be surprised here if they just let the clock run out on the half now as the Miners trail it 35-10 as we head to halftime. Three seconds, two seconds, and time runs out here in the first half. The fans coming to their feet here at Commonwealth. And I'll tell you what, Phil, good half of football. This crowd appreciates it. They do. They, they, you know, it's one of those games you don't want to say anything against UTEP, but a lot of people felt like Kentucky is a team that they should be able to beat and put them away, and they're doing it early, and I think that's what the crowd's responding to. You know what? You're beating. You know, there's teams you're supposed, games you're supposed to win on your schedule, and there's games you're, some of them you're supposed to not win that you need to pick up, and this is one of them, and they're doing it in some really good fashion right now. Uh, let's get down to the field now to Drew Diener. Coach Guy Morris, halftime, 35 to 10. You were worried about your team coming out, perhaps flat, and doesn't look like it in the first half. Well, I tell you what, they're not playing up to what I think they ought to be playing. I'm not happy with their tempo, the speed of the game, their concentration, and their execution. We'll have a hot to hawk this half. Does that mean you'll keep the first stringers in perhaps a little longer? You're not that happy, or when do you start worrying about playing yeah, the second? Let's talk about that right now. Good luck to you, Coach. It's coach Guy Morris, right back to you. <laughs> well, that's what, what you might expect from a coach. <laughs> keep the heat on, huh? He was not happy at all. I've been around him enough to know when he's a little upset, and he's definitely, it's not anything for the cameras right there, guys. He is not happy with what he's seeing. Here at halftime, it's Kentucky 35, Texas El Paso 10. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Before bad things happen, call Keeney, the only Kentucky name in workers' compensation. Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance, making workers' comp work. KU provides some of the lowest rates in the entire nation. At the same time, our customer service levels are second to none. We're there when you need us. And even when you don't. KU. Customers first. Energy that lasts. With all due respect to the information highway, it's the asphalt highway that keeps America moving. Which is why Chevron offers not just lubes, but some smart solutions, too. Tools like Maintenance Manager are specialized fleet software to help you reduce costs. We offer seminars for mechanics, emergency lube deliveries. Hey, if the trucks stop, America stops. Chevron, we know your world. 9-11, a date now seared into the American consciousness. 
I'm Randy Moore. Join us as we tell the story through the eyes of tri-state people living in New York. That's it. You had a clear shot right down there where the crane is. That's it, right? Absolutely. Exclusive Fox 7 News coverage from New York and right here in the tri-state. The pain, the patriotism, the recovery, and the resolve to overcome. 11 days in September, only on Fox 7 News. University of Kentucky Wildcat Football is brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All-around coverage, all-around Kentucky. By CHA Health. Log on to www.chahealth.com. By Pepsi, the joy of cola. By Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance. Teamy, Kentucky's leading workers' comp provider. By KU, where low rates and high level of service combine to make KU a great energy value. By your local Ford dealer. Quality people, quality products. And by St. Joseph Heart Institute, Kentucky's only top 50 heart hospital. On this warm September afternoon here at Commonwealth Stadium, the home opener and the Kentucky Wildcats leading the Miners of Texas El Paso here at halftime by a score of 35 to 10. And we're happy to welcome you to the Anthem Halftime Show. Bromley along with Bill Ransdell here at Commonwealth Stadium. We welcome you back and the Wildcats. I can't remember the last time Kentucky put up 35 in the first half this early in the season. It's been a while. It, it, it's really promising for the offense and I know the staff has to be a little pleased. You heard Coach Morris at the end saying that they weren't getting it done the way he wanted to, but getting 35 points in the first half is nice. It shows that the offense is getting comfortable and I think it's a little quicker than anybody expected. They picked up their passing game here this afternoon. They did and it, it's one of those things you touched on early on that Jared started one for four and then he went eight for eight. He settled in. He's found different receivers. The ball's getting spread around the field a lot. Another good sign that they are understanding this offense. They're executing it and there's good things left to come I think for this offense. But UTEP he has uh, 10 points Bill but the Kentucky defense is leveled in some hard hits. They're doing a good job. That front four, the front seven as we call them, the, the linemen and the linebackers are doing a good job. The secondary is keeping everything in front of it for the most part. They had the one big play but other than that they're keeping it up there and they're keeping them where they want them and they're keeping pretty good contained if they can continue to do that this is going to be a long day for this UTEP offense all right we'll continue along with the anthem halftime show in just a moment here at the break it's Kentucky leading the Miners of Texas El Paso 35 to 10 I see you chose Pro Care Home Health good choice Thank you or a family member has a potential need for home health, contact ProCare Home Health for a free consultation. Medicare patients should know home health services are covered 100%. Remember, you do have a choice in home health care. Helping you heal at home. Who knows what tomorrow brings in the world you heart survives. Introducing Life Moments, the new show that's uplifting daytime television. Premieres September 9th at 8 a.m. on Fox 7. Hi everybody, I'm Roy Firestone of ESPN Sports, and Fox 7 is on your side. Friend, thank you for your attention. Big crowd at Commonwealth Stadium with Kentucky leading here at halftime, 35 to 10 over UTEP. Ground recently was broken for the new home at the University of Kentucky Center for Rural Health. Carl Nathy brings us a close-up look in today's university report. Which one? Two. Three. There we go. University of Kentucky officials were joined by several partners at the groundbreaking ceremony this summer. The new four-story, 57,000-square-foot facility will be located on the campus of the Hazard Appalachian Regional Healthcare Medical Center. This one makes a real difference in the 
in the heart of the mountains. And it gives us an opportunity to bring the university and the, the programs from the Chandler Medical Center deep into, into the heart of Appalachia in a way that uh, will really make a difference in the lives of people. And that's what's important. In 2000, the UK Center for Rural Health was selected as the nation's outstanding rural health program. This more than $13 million project represents a unique collaboration of university, KCTCS, state, federal, and private funding sources. Former Kentucky State Senator Benny Ray Bailey and Dr. Grady Stumbo played vital roles in nurturing their dream of such a facility in eastern Kentucky. The new center, expected to open in 2004, will be named the Bailey Stumbo Building. Improving our economy and improving our situation, it's not just a matter of bringing in a factory. We have to raise all boats. We have to raise the level of educational attainment. We have to raise the level of health. We have to raise the level, the, the entire social atmosphere of this area. And to do that, we have to make an integrated commitment to changing the very nature of the way we think about the way we work and the way we learn and the way we care for ourselves. The new UK Center for Rural Health Building is on its way in Hazard, part of a bright future at the University of Kentucky. And the Anthem Halftime Show will continue in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium in just a moment. financing for 60 months on Ford Explorer. That can mean interest savings over $8,400. Explorer has a smoother ride with a rear independent suspension. Roomier with a full flat third row seat. 0% financing for 60 months. Ford authorized clearance now. Back pain can be a nightmare. But now there's a proven non-surgical solution. A breakthrough procedure called Vax-D takes the pressure off the discs and spinal nerves and lets the back mend itself. In a recent study of more than 900 patients, Vax-D was proven to be over 75% effective in treating these serious back problems. Call day or night for free information and examination. University of Kentucky Wildcat Football is brought to you by Ashland, the who in how things work. By Alltel, now offering solutions right here in Kentucky. By Southern Bell Dairy, around here it's a tradition. By Speedway. By your local Chevy dealer. By LG&E, customers first, energy at last. And by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, decide to be healthy. Continue along now with the Anthem Halftime Reports. We take a look at the first half statistics. And Bill, the Wildcats have got 271 yards total offense. They've got 128 on the ground, 143 in the air. UTEP with 172 yards total offense. Kentucky with one turnover, the fumbled punts. And penalties have hurt the Miners. They've been penalized five times for 27 yards. Kentucky with three penalties. Interesting to note, UTEP actually has more possession time, but was not able to convert on third down like Kentucky was. That's that defense stepping up, Rob. We've, we've been talking about that front seven. On. There's nothing else really you can say. They're just doing a great job of keep containing and keeping everything right there, and especially on third down. Wildcats were six of eight on third down. UTEP just one of seven. Getting set to begin the second half of play. Let's go down on the field and check in with Drew Diener. Well, around 35 points at halftime. Seems like a lot. Not the record, though. 56 points for a game against North Dakota State back in 1950 when Babe Perilli was a quarterback of that team. He's in the stands today taking, on the, taking uh, this game in. One thing that's interesting about this, Kentucky has basically played a game and a half and has no significant injuries. Dustin Williams questionable for the second half, but other than that, Kentucky, Kentucky is completely healthy. So even though Guy Morris had his grumpy shirt on earlier this week, I don't think he'll be grumpy about the fact his team is relatively healthy. He, had a, he was grumpy there at the half with Drew there, wasn't he, Rob? <laughs> I think it was still on underneath that shirt. 
Thank you, Drew. We'll have the second half kickoff in just a moment. That's our Anthem Halftime Report. We'll continue from Commonwealth Stadium after this. I felt very blessed to be able to play at the University of Tennessee. I made up my mind. I don't expect to ever look back. I just didn't want to look back and wish I would have returned for my senior year because I'd already received my degree. I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. It just came down to realizing that college football is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. From the classes during the week to the game days, pre-games, post-games, I wanted to come back and enjoy the entire experience. NCAA football, a lifetime of opportunity. At Owensboro Mercy Health System, we know that the birth of a child is one of the most joyous events in a family's life. That's why we've designed the New Life Birthing Center with you in mind. Combining the comforts of home, private rooms, and baths, along with a highly trained, caring maternity team. So you'll have a relaxed, family-centered birthing experience. Let us help you welcome your baby at the New Life Birthing Center, where we celebrate the miracle of new life each and every day. And we welcome you back to Commonwealth Stadium. Rob Romley along with Bill Ransdell, Drew Deaners down on the field. The Wildcats will be kicking off to begin this third quarter on what has turned out to be a hot, hot afternoon on this first Saturday in September. They've got the ice down on the sidelines and the fans going. One of the hotter days that I can remember, Bill, in the early season. Well, hopefully they won't have to use that ice to wake this Kentucky team up this second half. I know that Coach Moore's probably pre he had his grumpy shirt on as we talked about. The big thing he's probably saying is, look, let's not let up, guys. Let's come out as a team that's ahead and show that we're ahead, and let's show that we're a superior team. Defensively, let's go out and take control of it. You're gonna, they're going to have the ball offensively first. Offense, come out, and let's just stick to our knitting and, and get move the chains. Richard Muthuri along with Howard Jackson back to return the kick. This is Jackson from the one-yard line. Flipped the tackle, then is hit and turned around, and again it was Fontaine who got downfield in a hurry. Tayo Aboke also down there, the senior from Houston, Texas. Aboke had the first hit on him there that he shook that tackle. He had good containment. He just shook him off of it. He got up again, and as much as anything, I can't reiterate this enough. This Kentucky team, I have yet to see a kid, Rob, that just doesn't give 100%. They miss a tackle, they get up, they're running to the pile. It, you know, that is something that you cannot replace his effort. The Gary Norwich team finding himself in a 35 to 10 hole as we begin this third quarter of play. Miners take over, they have it without good field position back at their own 14 yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. This time they have Jackson split out here to the near side and Chopper takes off on his own right back up the middle and I think he's got a first down at the 25 yard line before David Johnson was able to get him down. Well, they want to keep the ball in, in Sharper's hands and or in Jackson's hands. They're two of their big play receivers, big play guys on offense, I should say. Here it is, Sharper just taking a little three-step drop. It's a quarterback draw the entire way. They just, they lift it, the, the aggressive defensive front of Kentucky come in. Sharper picks a hole, gets up, and gets a first down. From the 25, out of the eye, Sharper to the air. And throwing here to the near sidelines and trying to make a one-handed catch-up penalty marker goes down. Chris Francis, the intended receiver. We're going to have interference called here on Derek Tatum, who is pleading his case. But I didn't think there was too much question about it. I didn't either. I don't know what he's pleading, but I don't think there was any shot. I think he knew he was beat, and it's better to go ahead and take a penalty than give up six points. Watch here on the left side of your screen here on the replay. You can see right coming in now. You should see there, right there, grabbing a hold of his left arm there. If not, I'll tell you what, he did a great job of, he should be, uh, he should be in movies if, if it wasn't. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first foul. I think he knew he'd rather give up 15 yards there, Rob, than a touchdown, you know. <laughs> when it's all said and done, they say grab him. Now the penalty will move the ball up to the 40-yard line, and the Miners will have it right there with another first down. As they post their second first down now on this drive, the first one on the run by Shopper, and this one by way of penalty at their own 40. 
So they get out of the hole. They started all the way back at their own 14. Just underway, third quarter. Kentucky leading in the game 35 to 10. Miners out of the eye formation. On the option. Jackson takes the pitch, and Mike Williams was right back there covering that play in a hurry. I'll tell you, he's a great athlete, a sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida, moved from cornerback to outside safety this season. Really a late find back in the summer of 2001 out of Godby High School. Played in 10 games as a freshman. He's got great range. He can cover a lot of ground out there for the defense. No gain on the play. It's second down and 10 from the 40. Francis cuts it back to the far side of the field, finds some running room, and then is leveled by David Johnson, coughed up the ball. And they say he was already down. UTEP football. I think that one will go down as one of the worst calls they probably had at this point. Williams again there, making something happen and forcing the receiver across the field. Watch right here. Coming across, there's Williams missing a tackle. There's Grigsby. There's Robertson effort laying out. The ball is out. It might not have been a bad call after all. His knees were on the ground, weren't they? Good lick there, though, by David Johnson and letting him know that he was in his area. That's what David Johnson <laughs> has been known for throughout his Kentucky career. Third down and a yard to go. Penalty marker goes down now before the ball is snapped, and I think the Miners had some movement. Justin Hunt again, the tight end. That's the other side of that coin when you go that on. Ball. Full start on the offense, five-yard penalty. When you're going to vary your cadence, you got to make sure you're doing it. I've, I've seen very few college teams that can do it consistently week in and week out. When you get to the NFL, sometimes they go on four and five counts, but it's very and difficult to do sometimes. <laughs> that gives them now third and six rather than third and a yard. Huge penalty. Miners were penalized five times for 27 yards in the first half. Their first penalty here in the second half. Chopper, incomplete over the middle, trying to get it to the tight end. Jonas Crafts, it falls incomplete. Now the Miners move the ball out of the hole as they started back at their 14-yard line, but now they'll have to give it up. And Kentucky will get the football for the first time here in this third quarter. Good thought by right there by Sharper trying to go. They had Morris Lane covering, covering Crafts there, the tight end. They had what they wanted. It just looked like it, the ball wasn't quite thrown where it needed to be. Bryce Benakos now standing at his own 30-yard line. Got a good snap. High kick. Abney comes up. Cuts back. Now comes to the near side of the field and goes down at about the 28-yard line. So the Cats will get it for the first time this afternoon. Richard Muthery downfield to make the tackle. First time here in this second half. We'll break away for a moment with 12.49 to go third period. Kentucky leading 35 to 10. We've enjoyed being a part of people's lives. Now we're a part of yours. We're Alltel, your new local phone company. Alltel, are you connected? They say travel is broadening. That's why I'm taking a cruise. But to make sure I'm not too broad to board, I'm shaping up to ship out. By drinking Southern Bell All Natural Ultra Skim, it tastes great, yet it's fat free. So when I wear my ultra skin this swimsuit, oh, I will not be the butt of jokes. Try Southern Bell All Natural Ultra Skim Fat Free Milk. Exhibit your good taste. Fifty years ago, the United States, the Republic of Korea, and 20 other countries fought for the first time under the United Nations banner against Stalinist North Korea and Communist China. The Korean War raged for three long years, 
more than 33,000 Americans lost their lives. Another 100,000 were wounded, and over 7,000 became POWs. Now, those veterans who stood their ground to stop communist aggression played a major role in this nation's Cold War victory. Today, six million American veterans of the Korean War are alive. During the 50th anniversary commemoration of this war, we pause to honor and thank these uncommon patriots, both living and dead, and their families. We must remember the past and study and learn from it to ensure a better tomorrow. I'm James Garner, a grateful nation remembered. As you look at the Kentucky sidelines here at the near side of the field, Leonard Burress, number 27 there. And I'll tell you, it's a hot, hot day. Warm enough up here in the shade, down on the field. Temperature expected to reach at least into the low 90s, possibly the mid 90s here this afternoon. Kentucky takes over first and 10 from its own 29. Pinner. Pulls his way forward up to the 32 yard line, a pickup of three. Carmar Jackson, the Will linebacker, along with DJ Walker coming in on the stop. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Wildcat offense now that is nearing the 300 yard mark on the afternoon. Jared Lorenzen throwing touchdown passes to Aaron Boone in the first half. Another one to Glenn Holt. Chris Bernard caught his first as a Wildcat and then Chase Harp. Lorenzen swinging it back here to Abney. Got some blockers in front of him. Across midfield and down the sidelines. All the way for the touchdown. 68-yard touchdown pass from Jared Lorenzen to Derek Abney. What a big play for this offense. Just a little flanker screen out here. Jared does a great job of looking it off. He comes back and looks to his left. They had a little blitz working. You can see there he comes across the screen. There's nobody left outside there. Dabney gets the ball. It's supposed to go inside. He breaks it back out, and then it's just a foot race. He does a good job there of just putting his head down and, and turning it on. He outran Alex Ross all the way to the end zone there. Here's Ruth with the conversion, and he's got it through the uprights. Time out on the field with 11.56 to go, third quarter. And Kentucky extends its lead. The Wildcats on top early third period, 42 to 10. Under age 65, no group health coverage, no problem. Stop going around in circles looking for individual health coverage and stop worrying about the cost. Now you can get affordable individual coverage that's flexible enough to fit your life no matter where you are in life. Just take the direct route. Call Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Whether you're self-employed, an early retiree, a recent graduate, or not eligible for coverage at work, and you need coverage for yourself, your family, or just your children, there's an Anthem plan that's right for you with coverage for doctor visits, hospital stays, outpatient services, and more without needing referrals. Prescription drugs? At Anthem, we've got you covered. Call to find out more today. Call 1-800-959-2211 or your Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield agent today. That's 1-800-959-2211. Call now. What would you like to eat, Jaden? Something. How about some apple? Yeah. Cheese? No. Yeah. No. How about some yogurt? No, no yogurt. KU provides some of the lowest rates in the entire nation. Yeah. At the same time, our customer service levels are second to none. Just a bit of good news that we hope will go down very easy. Yeah. KU. Customers first. Energy that lasts. Good. I felt very blessed to be able to play for the University of Tennessee. I made up my mind, and I don't expect to ever look back. I just didn't want to look back and wish I would have returned for my senior year. Because I had already received my degree, I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. It just came down to realizing that college football is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. From the classes during the week, to the game days, pre-games, post-games, I wanted to come back and enjoy the entire experience. NCAA football, a lifetime of opportunity. 
Well, just a moment ago, very well conceived play here as Lorenzen will screen to Abney. He's got Keith Chatelain there, number 65 out in front, and Tommy Cook, and then Abney turns on the speed. Well, uh, just a good read there, and again, uh, Jared was set up by Jared looking it off to the left side, his strong side, and being the left-handed passer. Set there just long enough to get the get the weak side defensive end to come on in and take the bait. He flips it out there to Abney, and the rest of it's just a foot race. Abney now with three catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. And Lorenzen's 10 of 17 for 211 yards. Five touchdown passes for the big guy on the afternoon. Number 97, Justin Hunt will kick off. And Richard Muthery and Terrence Miner now come back to return the kick. End over end. And it's going to be Muthery. Right back up the middle of the field. Over the 20-yard line and fights his way forward across the 25. And now the ball's picked up. Hooked up by Tim Funderburk of the Kentucky Special Teams Unit, but they ruled that he was already down. And Funderburk lost his headgear in the process. See what happened here as Muthery gets hit. They wrestle him to the ground, and it looked like the ball look came like, free. And look yeah. at Funderburk, who had lost his headgear. He's got the football. Great play there by Funderburk coming out with the ball. And not the, worried about it, not having his headgear, you know? And <laughs> the officials here, Bill, are talking about it. Referee Thomas Ritter, let's see. Yeah. Good, good call. Kentucky football. Tim Funderburk. A junior free safety, 6'2", 190 pounds, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, who has not played very much at all, but he burst onto the scene on that play. Yeah, I believe he, he transferred a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken, came in here and has done a great job filling in on special teams and just waiting his time right now. And there it is. He strips the ball clearly while he's still on above ground. Shane Boyd in a quarterback for the Wildcats. So we see the sophomore from Henry Clay High School here in Lexington again, handing it off to R2 Spinner. Slips through a hole and goes down to the 26-yard line. And of course, it was Boyd with that explosive run in the first half. Robert Rodriguez made the tackle. Look for Kentucky just to be kind of basic here. Get get Shane a little bit of little a few reps here to kind of get him into the flow. You never know what's going to happen at the quarterback position. You can be gone tomorrow. That was the last play was a little counter trade, just trying to work Pinner. They're going to work on the running game here. They may do a little counter or boot bootleg action here shortly. Pinner again. Look at him go. Oh, they can't get him down. What a run by R2 Spinner. <laughs> That's not the fans booing. That's everybody yelling twos. They love him here. They love to see the guys churning it out, picking his knees up, and will not slow down. What a great run by R2 Spinner. 16 yards. Here it is again. He's now got 84 yards on the day. And Rick Fetty and Sam Clark finally got him down. And all that yardage was yak yardage. Yards after contact. He got hit at the line of scrimmage, Rob, and never looked back. Forty-two to ten. Gary Nord decides to go for a timeout. And as you look at the Kentucky huddle there, you can see that Jared Lorenzen has the baseball cap on, which could indicate that might be done for the day. Could be. We'll see. Here's a reminder to call in and talk to Kentucky head coach Guy Morris and the voice of the Wildcats, Tom Leach, every Tuesday night at seven o'clock on the UK Radio Network. If he is definitely done for the day, then I don't think they're going to be done necessarily throwing the ball. 
and getting to know the staff as you have, Rob, that they don't seem like the kind of staff just to run something up. I think they're no. going to do what they want. They're going to work on their offense as much as they can, but they're not going to run it up. They're going to take and throw a few things to get Shane Boyd some experience. They'll do that. Otherwise, they're going to keep doing what they've been doing most of the game and, and move it around a little bit. All right. Now we're set to go with 10.46 remaining third quarter, and Kentucky just blowing this game wide open. It was 35 to 10 at halftime. The Wildcats have already scored here in the third quarter on a touchdown pass to Abney. And now here's Pinner again. Carrying it down just inside the seven where he's hauled down by linebacker Kamar Jackson. Cats have now amassed a total of 362 yards in total offense on the afternoon. 271 at halftime. Of course, the big touchdown pass to Abney. And it's now second down and goal at the seven-yard line. Alexi Bogini coming into the Wildcat backfield, wearing number 25. He sits there just in front of our two spinner as they go in the eye formation. And now Shane Boyd wants a timeout. Timeout, Kentucky. That's the first timeout they have had. Looked so like, both teams have called a timeout here on this well, series. Well, it looked like it just wasn't happy, wasn't comfortable. It looked like there was a misalignment there, and the, the, the 30, 25 second clock had run down so low that he was Shane wasn't going to be able to get it corrected. Good heads up play there by the by the second year guy. We'd like to remind you that for every field goal made in today's game, Whitaker Bank will donate fifty dollars to the UK Library Fund. Up to this point, we've seen a bunch of touchdowns. One field goal, that was UTEP, so. Yeah. What a day That's Jared Lorenzen has had, and Shane Boyd now coming in on this series here in the second half, and the Wildcats have it second and goal down at the seventh. Good chance right here for Boyd and the rest of this offense. I can see some substitutions up on the offensive line there also taking place to, to get some good game experience, and there's nothing quite like game experience to, to compare. You, you just don't get it in practice. You're, you're going against your roommate, your teammate, and there, there's just nothing that can compare to going against somebody else. So a great chance here for Kentucky to take the depth that they do have and the lack thereof of it and get them some experience in going to forward in this season. 75, Sylvester Miller has come in there. A defensive tackle, Jeremy Darvo, is also in an offensive tackle. Mike Campe, touchdown. Mike Campe, who came into the game at fullback. And he puts it in the end zone from seven yards out. And is the senior from Cincinnati ever excited? I think it's his first. I think he's a little excited, to say the least. I was surprised he didn't bring the ball off with him on that one. That's great stuff to see right there. That's what college football is all about. First touchdown is a Wildcat. And it is 48 to 10. Justin Hump now to attempt the point after for the Wildcats, and it is through the uprights. It is good. Time out on the field with 10 minutes and three seconds to go in the third quarter. And the Wildcats just absolutely blowing UTEP off the field. It is 49 to 10. I've worked for Speedway in Kentucky for 16 years. I've lived in Kentucky all my life, and now I manage the Speedway in my hometown. Best part of my job is making people happy. I love what I do, and I love to see my customers smile. I'm real proud of what we do here in Kentucky, and I challenge anyone to do it better than we do. Speedway is Kentucky proud, and proud to support University of Kentucky football. We're on your way to the convenience stores of Speedway. Why are more Kentuckians turning to CHA Health? Because access is easier than ever. And with our prevention and wellness programs, good health is within your reach. Plus, CHA Health offers one of the largest provider networks in our state. We show our commitment to you by taking service to the next level. If you haven't made the switch to CHA Health, remember... Change is good. CHA Health. Your kind of people. Your kind of care. And it's time now for the Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage defensive play of the game. I don't think there's any question. You look right here, coming up on the kickoff return. And again, 
It's watch right there. Thunderbird grabs the ball and yanks it out of the UTEP. Ben Zane, he grabs it. He says, hey, I'm in the NFL even though I'm down. I'm going to get up with my helmet off and run and try to score. Good, great effort by Thunderbird there of making something happen. And that's our Kentucky Farm Bureau all-around coverage defensive play of the game. Kentucky just exploding here early in this third quarter. Long touchdown pass to Derek Abney and a fumble recovery. Another touchdown as Mike Campay has just scored and the Miners will not have very good field position to start with as they will have to start now from their own 16-yard line. And look who's down there and again losing the headgear. I think he needs to see <laughs> Tom Kalinowski, the equipment manager. Those should fit pretty <laughs> snug, don't they? <laughs> look at him. He loves it. You got to like that. Look at him come off the field like that. He's looking around looking for more. Hey, where can I go? Where can I? Can I get in there for Robertson or Caudill? Maybe not to that degree, huh? No. <laughs> So from the 17-yard line now, the Miners will put it in play. And Chopper, who has been there all afternoon, still at quarterback. Jackson. Trying to cut it back. An elusive runner. Not very big, and he has got the ability, Bill, to do just that. At 5'10 and 155 pounds, he ran for 157 yards and four touchdowns last weekend against Sacramento State. It's 13-yard gain, and talk about making something out of nothing. That he did, and I think that that play right there kind of typifies where Coach Morris was at the half. I, you look at the defense, and we, the, the starters are still playing right now. I don't think he's pleased right now with the defense's tempo as much as anything. They're not wrapping up. He wants to see them close this game out on a, on a positive note. First and 10 from the 30, Shopper running the option. That play never had a chance. Jeremy Cottle just all over it. That'll get him closer to getting out. That kind of effort and that kind of, that kind of pursuit will definitely get him closer to the, to the water tanks and the, and the cool air on the sideline. I'll tell you, they had that play covered, didn't they? That they did. Loss is back to the 26-yard line, really a little closer to the 25. Let's call it the 25. It'll be second down and 15 yards to go. Urban Flowers coming into the Kentucky secondary. Going to send Dustin Williams out. He's able to get off the field in time. Chopper. Incomplete. Terrence Miner has been his key receiver here this afternoon. That time he overthrew him. Well, and it's got to be getting frustrating. UTEP came out in an ace backfield. Basically, they had their guards tackles, and then they put two tight ends on both sides. They're trying to give maximum protection right now for Chopper just to get something positive going here so that they can go home and find something to build on. They only put two guys out in coverage. Kentucky's sitting in a zone. It's very difficult to throw against three defenders with just your one receiver. Well, they send three receivers here to the near side. Jackson, Miner, Givens is also here to the near side of the field on third down and 15. Little screen. This is to the fullback, Jimmy Smith. I believe that's the first time he's had the ball in his hands this afternoon. A sophomore from Midland, Texas, Bo Smith, made the tackle. Great play by Bo Smith. Well, let's go down to the field now to Drew Diener. Well, Kentucky has been virtually injury-free, but Keith Chatelaine right now will not return to this game. He's got ice wrapped around his left knee. Jim Manaleto said that he could return if they needed him, but the coaches have told him he's not coming back into this game. He's on the bench right now with ice on that knee, will not return. Thank you, Drew. Demarcus Wood, number 85, has come into the game to return the punt, and he's got a high one to deal with. Does a good job to haul it in. Stays on his feet and ends up losing yardage. Back to the 32-yard line. Number 85, Demarcus Wood, 6 feet, 193 pounds, a freshman out of Chesapeake, Virginia. First time we've seen him in the ball game. Well, they're wanting to get somebody else in there and get some experience when, with Abney 
looking to leave the team after the year as he's a senior at this point and they want to get more experience to keep building for the future years not to mention if something happened to Abby and he's he gets hurt or nicked up and couldn't go for it Archer's pinner Rock Johnson in the Wildcat backfield and here's Pinner finding a hole over the 40 down the sidelines and into UTEP territory before he's finally brought down Weldon Cooks got him from behind Tim Woodard was down there. 29 yard run for two, our two spinner. Big run here, he's just diving it in here. They're not trying to run anything up. And again, as earlier, he had good field of vision of field. He bounced it outside. Nobody out there, a good job of just getting downfield and look at there at the end. He could have run out of bounds, but he didn't. He picked up an extra two yards. And with that carry, he's at 116 yards on the day. Alexi Bogini. Alexi Bogengi, spelled B-W-E-N-G-E, -E, out of Quebec, Canada, with a carry. And takes it down to the 32-yard line. And it's time now for the Ashland Oil player of the game. We will announce that coming up at the conclusion of today's contest. Second down, four yards to go from the 32. Bogingi down close to the 25 yard line that'll be enough for the first down first and 10 for the Wildcats as Kentucky continues to move the football Godwin Alejandro makes the tackle for Texas El Paso but it's a Kentucky first down clock running with 650 left to go here in the third quarter Kentucky up 35 10 at the half, leading it now 49 to 10. And Bogingi gets a couple of yards, carrying it straight up the middle, and Tim Woodard came up to make the hit, along with Godwin Akindoro. Kentucky's made some wholesale substitutions up front right now. They have Sylvester Miller, number 75, playing right tackle. They have Antonio Hall, 73, playing right guard. At the center is Daniel Burnett. At the left guard is Brandon Leswinski. And then at left tackle is Jeremy Dar Darboro. Shane Boyd working out of the shotgun. Carries inside the 20. And he's going to be close to a first down, Bill. I think he's come up a little bit short. It was from all high. The defensive end, a senior out of Lubbock, Texas, who made the tackle. Well, and it was they, they had the draw again that they ran earlier with, with Shane, and it looks like the UTEP front four getting a little tired. They, you, you use, those draws were good when you're getting a good hard rush, and they just kind of were sitting back, I think, trying to get through this third quarter and get moved closer to the fourth and get the heck out of here. And as the wave goes around Commonwealth Stadium, the Cats have it third and one at the 16. Holt goes in motion, takes the handoff, and there he goes to the end zone. Glenn Holt coming around and taking the handoff and carrying 16 yards to Pater. Watch, watch right here, here comes Holt. Shane Boyd to put him in motion. It's a little, and it put him in motion, crossing the formation, little, little motion sweep. They just handed it off to him. They timed up the, the, the timing of the snap. They gave it to him, and around the corner he went. And he was sprung on that corner in part by Wayne Gaffer in the tight end. He took his guy about 10 yards in the end zone and put him on his back, what we call a pancake. And the conversion by Justin Hutton. Glenn Holt has his second touchdown of the afternoon. Remember, he caught that touchdown pass earlier. So he has one by way of air and now one by way of ground. 16 yards on the run. And the Wildcats have put up 56 on the board. It is 56 to 10. I don't know what else they can do right now, Rob. They've got all their substitutions in. They're not really trying to run it up. Our 
next broadcast will come your way next weekend, Saturday, September 14th, as the Cats stay right here at home in Commonwealth Stadium to host the Indiana Hoosiers. Check the local listings for all the action right here on the UK Television Network. An odd sight looking at a Commonwealth. It looks, you see a few people already starting to leave, and it's, it's a change. It's nice to see that it's, because uh, Kentucky's up so much. I think that they're starting to feel the heat a little bit more now. Well, no doubt about that. It is hot in the stands today, and with the tremendous heat here this afternoon, the kind of conditions that uh, we have had for many, many days throughout July and August and now into September. Some of the fans are starting to head for the exits and take a break from this sun. And they have seen Kentucky put up 56. It is 56 to 10. John Austin Emmons has gone back to return this kick. And coming back here with it is Muthery. Emmons was to the far side of the field. That was Muthery who brought it up over the 25-yard line and got it back to the 26-yard line where Raymond Fontaine, who's done a good job on special teams here this afternoon, brought him down. So from the 26, the Miners have it first and 10. Five minutes, three seconds left to go here in the third quarter, and it's 56 to 10, Kentucky. As the catch, Bill, after having, what, 271 yards at halftime, have now put 438 up for the game. Good day's work wow. and it, it, for anybody's offense. And the way it looks right now, they're probably going to go well over 500 unless they just start putting the ball on the ground. And the Miners keeping it on the ground here on first and 10. Matt Austin carries Vincent Burns. Sweet P. Burns comes in on the tackle, wearing number 98. Sweet pea, how about that? He is the furthest thing from resembling a pea that I've ever seen. He's more like a big T-bone. <laughs> or porterhouse. Out of Georgia, but transferred from 1AA Northern Arizona. Boy, has he come on, because you know, Bill, he had an appendectomy in the spring and had only one week of spring practice. But came back strong in fall workouts and has started this season in great shape. Second down, seven yards to go. Chopper. Incomplete. Mike Williams there with a hit. You know, you speak of appendectomies, it makes me, reminds me of a, a close, close person of this UK program, Mike Chisholm. He is the director of football operations, and we'd like to take a moment and, and wish him well and his return. He had gone into the hospital for just a little uh, touch-up surgery that related to an appendectomy. Some things kind of went awry there, and very, very serious at one point, Rob, that uh, we almost lost Mike. He's gotten out of the hospital a couple of days ago, and we wish him the best and look forward to him getting back. Yeah, it's great news to hear that he's doing so well. Mike, I know you're probably looking in tonight. We wish you the very, very best. Hope to see you back in the football offices soon. And this pass is caught after five straight incompletions. Shopper has a completion to his tight end, Justin Hunt. And it will be enough for a first down to the 40-yard line. Let's get down to the field to Drew. Well, you guys were talking about how deep Guy Morris was going into his bench. I just saw Seven Sakurovic taking some kicks here into the net. If he gets in the game and kicks an extra point, he'd be the fourth Wildcat that kicked an extra point this year. That's in two games. So I think he's going about as deep as he can go, guys. Well, that's for sure. Of course, Taylor Begley last week, Ruth kicking today. And we've seen Hutton come in now. And they lost the snap. Chopper never got a handle on it. Kentucky's recovered. If a game could go from bad to worse for a team, it is definitely doing that right now for Utah. I think Vincent Burns was the man who was down there at the bottom of the pile and pulled it out. Vincent Sweet P. Burns. The but ball resembled right there. a pea right there. It. That's the closest thing to a pea for that guy that you can see there. But I tell you, one of the most frustrating things in the world is the quarterback center exchange. It's the basic, basic rule. You can't get a play started until you get the ball as a quarterback. Boyd still a quarterback, and Bugingi still in there at the running back spot, and he gets the carry and takes it down to the 35-yard line for a gain of about three yards. Brian Givens, the sophomore defensive tackle out of El Paso, made the stop for the Miners. If there's anybody excited right now and feeling good, I bet you it's Guy Morris. Old offensive lineman, 
He doesn't want to run up the score, but a, what a great opportunity to get your second team and third team guys some good experience. And as an old lineman, he's going to grind it and grind it unless he has to throw it out of the field. Be here at all the home games. Send a man in motion here to the near side of the field, and here's Boyd throwing back to the near side, and it's caught and taken down to the 26-yard line. Daniel Hopewell. Daniel Hopewell, sophomore out of Harrodsburg, wide receiver, 5'10", 184 pounds, whose dad played for the Wildcats several years ago. Just a little three-step drop, little hit drop, little hitch route out there. And, you know, I say it just a second ago that they're not going to throw that they don't have to. While they don't have to, they're not going through for the jugular with that. They're just spreading the ball around a little bit. They want to keep Boyd sharp. He hasn't thrown a pass until that pass. It's a little, just basically takes the place of a running play. Number 40, Justin Sprouls into the Wildcat backfield, but Bugingi gets the handoff here and takes it down just to the 25-yard line. Brian Givens again on the stop for the Miners. Clock running now with 2.14 left to go here in the third quarter. Kentucky led it 35 to 10 at halftime and has just absolutely blown the game wide open here in the third quarter. Jared McGowan, the left tackle for Kentucky, will hear about that play tomorrow in films. He he passed said he did not step inside on the draw to be able to keep him away from it, and he he's the one that made, fell back and made the play. Bugingi again, and he's got it on the 20-yard line. Be a gain of about five. It'll still be about four yards shy of a first down. Kamar Jackson, the linebacker, coming up to make the tackle for Texas El Paso. And it's going to be third down and four yards to go for Gary Nord's team. Hopewell comes here to the near side of the field. And they send Demarcus Wood out to the far side. Rock Johnson, number 41, into the backfield. But Boyd will keep it and try to get the first down. He does. And he'll get the touchdown. No, he stepped out right down at the goal line. Oh, no, they give it to him. I thought the official was going to come up and mark him out just short of the goal line, but they give him the touchdown. I do, too. Look at here. All he's wanting to do is get the first down. They're just saying go, and he, Shane saw a little daylight, bounced through it. The rest of it, he goes down, kind of got a little, wasn't quite ready, got the ball across. That's what the referee was looking at to see if he had stepped out. He, he stretched the ball across and made the correct call. Boyd now with three rushes for 88 yards. Wow. Of course, he had that long run back in the first half. I think it was a 41-yarder, something along that line. So, big rushing day. Hutton with a conversion attempt, and it is through the uprights. And the Cats extend their lead now to 53 points. Wow. Put 63 on the board here with 111 left to go in the quarter. It is 63 to 10, Kentucky. I'm anxious to see if Kentucky's going to go deep at the quarterback position at some point here. You know, they, they talk about having two that can play, that they need to really help on the third. Will they go there for the fourth quarter and get some work? For live chats, the latest scores, stats, live total casts, and more, just visit www.ukathletics.com, your school's official athletic website. And we check in again down on the playing field with Drew Diener. Drew. Well, Bill, I think your assumption was right. I see Dan Lumley right now, the third string quarterback that probably nobody in Kentucky could name. Taking some throws right now. His teammates are pretty fired up for it. Aaron Boone's down here smiling. He's uh, kind of looking around like he's getting ready to go into the game, be the third quarterback in today. Good for them. That's, that, that, that'll be a great opportunity for Lumley to get a little experience and give him a little more depth. Again, it, you hate to talk about it. It's, it's uh, one of those things that can happen at any time, and uh, what a great opportunity for, for the Kentucky offense here. And, Bill, we've got another kicker in the game. As you look at Seven Sekurovich out of Henry Clay High School right here in Lexington, a native of Bosnia, 6'2", 190-pound sophomore. Gets his first chance to put his foot into it. Going to send it all the way back to the goal line. This is Muthuri again, right up the middle of the field. As the UTEP return men have seen a lot of work this afternoon, he brings it back to the 26-yard line. Arliss Beach on the tackle for the Wildcats. And again, the minor offense will come back onto the field and try to do some work here. And if we've gone under the one-minute mark in the third quarter, we've still got another whole quarter to go. I tell you, I know, I know UTEP knows about it, and I... 
I know they don't want to pack the 10 in, but at this point, what do you do? I mean, how often do you, how much more do, opportunities do you give this Kentucky offense? Saw Dan Lumley, number 14 down there. He's a freshman out of Windsor, Ontario, taking a few snaps. Chopper, who has gone all the way for the minors, incomplete. Intended for Terrence Minor and charging up there. Looked like Muhammad Abdullah going for the interception. Couldn't get it. Second down and 10. Uh, frustration really sitting in. Watch 89 right there at the top of your screen. You can see Justin Hunt. He's trying to release Otis Grigsby's just sitting there and covering him like a daggum blanket. And they let the call go. They didn't call offensive holding on him as far as uh, on, on Grigsby. They just... Grigsby, they just, I think the, that the referees at this point are trying to get this game into the fourth quarter and move it on. Chopper now just 10 of 23 on the afternoon for 118 yards. Rovan Cleveland in the minor backfield. And this one thrown well behind Jonas Crafts and incomplete. And it was Kamal Ahmad there who had a shot at the interception but couldn't quite come up with it. It'll be third down and 10 yards to go. Kentucky has made some substitutions. You've got Atwell in now at the free safety, I noticed, that transferred in from Ohio. You've got, uh, you've got, Mo you've got, it looks like Robertson and Calder are still working, though, at the defensive tackle. Other than, you got David Johnson still in there and a few select defensive backs, some seconds and thirds mixed in. So another spot here, another good opportunity for the defensive to get some work on their depth on their side of the ball. Chopper's gonna run it back up the middle. And he's knocked down at about the 32-yard line. Jet Bassett. Jet Bassett along with Claude Segal comes up to make the stop. It'll be shy of a first down. It will be fourth down coming up. And again, a punting situation for the Miners as Bryce Benekos, who's had a lot of work here this afternoon, again drops back to punt it away. DeMarcus Wood standing back around his own 31-yard line. Oh, look at Wood go across midfield, and the kicker, Benekos, is able to knock him out of bounds as time expires here in the third quarter. He brought it all the way down to about the 33-yard line. DeMarcus Wood, that's the end of the third period, and our score here at Commonwealth Stadium, Kentucky 63. Texas El Paso test. Under age 65, no group health coverage, no problem. Stop going around in circles looking for individual health coverage and stop worrying about the cost. Now you can get affordable individual coverage that's flexible enough to fit your life no matter where you are in life. Just take the direct route. Call Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Whether you're self-employed, an early retiree, a recent graduate or not eligible for coverage at work and you need coverage for yourself, your family, or just your children. There's an Anthem plan that's right for you with coverage for doctor visits, hospital stays, outpatient services, and more without needing referrals. Prescription drugs? At Anthem, we've got you covered. Call to find out more today. Call 1-800-959-2211 or your Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield agent today. That's 1-800-959-2211. Call now. Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Kerry Dean. We were hoping that this moisture in the Gulf of Mexico from the remains of Fay might make it up to the tri-state. There's still a, still a night side chance that might happen, but most of it appears like it's moving off to the west into the central parts of Texas, where they're getting as much as a foot of rain in some locations. Let's put the map into motion. You can watch the moisture moving across Texas. The tri-state pretty much uh, cloud-free. We're also are noticing, though, up to the north, a frontal system there. That eventually is going to make it here in the tri-state by Wednesday. 
and give us some relief from this heat and also from this ozone that we have there tonight. Quite a bit of ozone out there, so do be careful uh, if you're out walking or uh, jogging. Hazy tonight for the remainder of it, down to about 65 for an overnight low. Then for tomorrow, sun and clouds and ozone advisory, ozone alerting effect, orange category, high tomorrow, wow, around 94 degrees in the afternoon. More later here on Fox. Well, the return here by DeMarcus Wood just a moment ago, and Bill, if it hadn't been for the kicker, Benekos, he would have brought this thing back. That he would. I tell you, I was thinking right before the kick that you don't want to add injury to insult, and Kentucky's not trying to do that, but how do you how do you pull off? I mean, how do you, you, you know, you, you try to tell them to go, you can't tell them to go half speed. You come in, shy up, and then you somebody gets hurt. Uh, they're just trying to finish playing the game. They're, uh, you, you can see with their wholesale substitutions, they're not trying to run the score up. Hopefully for UTEP, they can, you know, some basic things can take place here and they can get, you know, just get on through the game. Well, I wouldn't have thought that we would get down to the third string quarterback here this afternoon, but this is Dan the, Lumley is in the game. And this is the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah. Still a long ways to go as Lumley takes over. 6'2", 170-pound freshman out of Windsor, Ontario. And he's going to hand it off here to Arliss Beach, the freshman out of Ashland. Cracks it just inside the 30-yard line. Good effort there by Beach. It, uh, he got inside. He was laying on a couple of his teammates. He knew he wasn't touching the ground. Kept churning his feet. The referee had to stop him and after they had uh, called the play dead. Kentucky 63, Texas El Paso 10 as Lumley goes under center. And breaking offside, looked like Sam Clark, the big Lumley defensive tackle out of San Antonio, comes across, but he was drawn off. Fatigue, setting in a little bit, frustration. Dead ball, Dead ball. ball start. start on the offense, five yard penalty. So he goes against Kentucky, and they'll march it back to the 35 yard line. At the 35. Three wideouts coming here to the near side of the field as Beach sets up behind Lumley. That's Hopewell who went in motion. Hopewell inside the 30 and wrapped up at the 29-yard line. And Marshall Sanford, the free safety out of Lake Jackson, Texas, makes the tackle. Let's go down once again to Drew Diener on the field. Drew? Well, 63 points, certainly a, not, but not a, re a lot, but not the record. The record, 83 points coming back in 1951. It's the most Kentucky has scored in a game since beating Louisville, 68 to 34. And I just wonder if the guys that were broadcasting that 83-point game have as much filler material as I hope you guys have right now. <laughs> You're so kind, Drew. Third down conversions. Kentucky is 8 of 10 on the afternoon. Here's Beach breaking it outside. And driven out of bounds over at the far side of the field. He's all the way down inside the 13-yard line. I think they've marked it right at the 13. Alex Ross got over there to finally drive him out. A little isolation play in the middle. You can see where the fullback, Justin Sprouse, was leading up in there. And again, just as Penner has done and Buenge has done earlier, Beach bounced it outside and caught all the UTEP defenders inside and used his speed to get to the corner and just made a good run. Well, Beach has now run for 39 yards on the afternoon. Four carries for 39. Here he goes again, through a hole. And down to about the seven yard line. Gain of about six, Richard Muthery making the tackle for Texas El Paso. UTEP just crowding the line here. They're trying to just do whatever they can to put eight and nine guys in the box. A real good job of Kentucky's offensive line and line and, and, and fullback of looking up their guy, getting, getting into them, holding their block long enough for Beach to find that little crease and make something happen. Second down, call it three yards to go from the six, and Beach up the middle. Stop just shy of the goal line. It's about as close as you could get. Marshall Sanford on the tackle for Utah. What an exciting time, though, for this offensive, the staff of Kentucky. Again, you can see the same thing again. They're just diving it straight ahead and saying, look, Utah, stop us. You know, we're not trying to do anything fancy. Uh, not trying to do it. I mean, Beach is just finding the holes and making the runs. Down to the goal line now. 
Lundley on a broken play goes into the end zone. That will be a very frustrating play for Coach Knorr to watch when he gets back to Texas. That play right there, if we get a replay, you can see where the UTEP defense, Rob, they just kind of stand around there and they just, it's like they gave up. Watch here. The ball's on the ground. Watch right here. Just kind of standing there. Let's, where, where's the wrap up? Where's everybody else? That's just kind of falling in on the play. They're frustrated. They're tired. They're getting their head handed to them. Uh, you know, that, but you don't want to see as a head coach somebody quit. Seven Sikurovich on to attempt the point after as Kentucky goes for its 70th point. And they've got it. It is 70 to 10. My gracious. And we've got 12.26 left on the clock. We'll be back in a moment. Here in the fourth quarter, it's Kentucky 70, Texas El Paso 10. Before bad things happen, call Keeney, the only Kentucky name in workers' compensation. Kentucky Employers Mutual Insurance, making workers' comp work. enjoyed being a part of people's lives. Now we're a part of yours. We're Alltel, your new local phone company. Alltel, are you connected? The patients you see behind me all suffer from serious low back pain. Now, many were considering surgery, but within weeks, over 75% of them were pain-free. Thanks to this revolutionary new treatment, called Vax-V that you're seeing here. It's patented, FDA approved, and non-surgical. To learn more, watch our special report, Back Pain Breakthrough, at the time shown on your screen. You don't have to suffer anymore. It began as a routine mission. There appears to be a massive displacement wave moving toward us. And it would change their destiny. Captain, there's something out there. Brace for impact. One crew and one ship's epic journey 70,000 light years away. We're on the other side of the galaxy. Now oh. is a quest to get back home. Why are you holding us here? See it from the beginning. We have no way back unless you send us. On the premiere of Star Trek Voyager. Monday on Fox 7. Rob Romley along with Drew Diener and Bill Ransdell here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington where the Wildcats have put 70 up on the board. It is 70 to 10 here in the fourth quarter. Sakurovich again with a kickoff, his second of the afternoon. Nice kick. And no chance to run that one back as Muthuri goes down on one knee. They will bring it back out of the 20-yard line. I have a question. Yes, sir. You're, you're the special teams coach, Mark Nelson. Have you seen anything here to change who your kicker is? Yeah, no, I'd, Ruth I'd, had a great day. He did. He had a good day. And, of course, we saw what Taylor Begley could do last week. And I don't know that it's more confusing now. Yeah, we've seen, <laughs> of course, Sikurovich has come in here and done the kickoffs. And we saw Hutton earlier do a good job. That's what you call depth. Depth at the kicker position. Now from the 20 now, Orlando Cruz is coming at quarterback for the Miners. He's a freshman out of Harlingen, Texas. And he goes under center first. We've seen him this afternoon. And Matt Austin, the freshman out of El Paso, takes the handoff and gets about four yards up to the 24, but that's all. Ellery Moore comes in to make the tackle for the Wildcats. Uh, just a basic little, you know, power, power run off tackle there. And Kentucky just kind of filling it in there. They've, they've pretty much substituted everything out on defense at this point. Robertson and Caldwell both are out. The only person really remaining out there is Moore. Just trying to get a little more experience and, you know, a little more reps against somebody else. Good run by Austin for the first down. Up to the 34-yard line, Muhammad Abdullah. 
Freshman out of Folkston, Georgia, on the stop for the Wildcats. Well, when you add up the total of players that Guy Morris has been able to get into this football game here this afternoon, it is going to be a bunch. Well, it's a great thing wow. for them because, you know, one of the things that they've got is they've got seven kids on this team that have earned scholarships. And one of the question marks with the probation was, what are they going to do when they lose them? And they've got this gray shirting. So what a great opportunity for some kids to see that, you know what, come on up here and give us a chance even though we have a reduction and we'll put you on scholarship and you get to play in SEC. Now Austin breaks free. Abdullah there to put a wrap on him and knock him down, but not before he gets down into Kentucky territory. Abdullah on the tackle. Down to the 46-yard line. And I think this will be frustrating for the defensive staff right here. They, they're getting out. They're getting whipped. The number two offensive line versus their twos and part, mostly some of their three. So they, it's going to be a good tool, though, for them to be able to teach with and say, look, guys, this is why you're a second and third team guy right now. Here's what you have to do. We need you to get this experience and be able to pick it up because you never know what's going to happen when it comes to injuries. Number 55, Chad Anderson is in the ball game at a linebacker spot for the Wildcats as Austin gets the handoff, rips it up the middle. Good hard run down to the Kentucky 20 yard line. The isolation play in the middle. They're just going between the guard and the tackle. That's the linebacker's job to fill it. I see the I see the linebacker coming through. I don't know that he's got his head up and is playing good fundamental football and finding the runner. Claude Segal finally knocked him down. But here against what pretty much amounts to a second and third team Wildcat defense, the Miners moving the ball right down the field. Austin now has piled up 62 yards on the day. First and 10 of the 20 here. And Austin again, and this time he's gonna be stacked up. Dion Holtz, the defensive end out of Warren Central High School in Bowling Green, leading the defensive charge for the Wildcats. Same play right there. Again, they just ran it right up in a little isolation. I'm noticing on the Kentucky side, Williams is back in. Williams is back. Yeah, both Williams with Dustin and, and Mike. They're back in on defense trying to get a little bit more game experience. I kind of confused myself there for a minute. Excuse me. It's second down and 10 from the 20-yard line now. Clock showing 9.45 remaining. Cruz throwing to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Now that ball was juggled. And the Miners end up getting a touchdown out of it as 86, Josh Jacob Gonzalez holds it in. He's a freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. Bo Smith right here has good, good positioning. Look, watch what happens. Oh, he's got his hands on. He tips it back up there to him and gives it to him. Boy, he's going to hate watching films tomorrow. Well, the Miners get it in the end zone for only the second time today. And here's Keith Robinson now with the conversion. And with 9.38 left to go in the football game, UTEP has put it in the end zone on an 80-yard drive. It's now 70 to 17. Now, tough spot. Most of your starters have been sitting. Most of your starters are on kickoff return. How long has it been since these guys have warmed up? I mean, do you have a second and 13 kickoff return? Usually you may have some seconds in there and some fill-ins, but you got to go right now and find your starters now for kickoff return, and they've been sitting on the sideline. And this is where you don't want to get an injury because people have been sitting down too long and not really loose or ready to get out there. 9.38 to go, and you can see the minor fans across the way. They did not sell many tickets. I think they sold about 350 or so down in El Paso. And so they returned a bunch is what happened. They returned around 6,000. Well, if, it, if El Paso, from speaking, if any of them's driving, that's a tough rascal to drive. Mm -hmm. Texas alone to cross is like 10 or 12 hours. Yeah, long, long ways. And I think you got to drive about that far to get a good flight. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. We've got back to return the kickoff for the Wildcats. And Andrew Hopewell. Hold has gone back there, and Andrew Hopewell, number 33, has gone over to the far side of the field, the freshman out of Danville, Kentucky. So it is Holt and Hopewell. And the kick by Manekos. Holt's going to bring it out. Ball down from behind at about the 22, and that's where the Wildcat offense will go to work. 
Paul Smith downfield to make the tackle for UTEP, number 22. Great job of Smith coming across and staying in his lane as the, as the play went away from him. He turned up and, and came in from the side for it. If he doesn't make that play, Holt's gone. There's nobody left. What do you want to bet number five touches the ball a few times on this drive? We're going to stick with Dan Lumley, a quarterback. And here he goes. Beach right up the middle, through a hole, and across the 30-yard line. Gain of about eight. Carlos Beach on the carry. Mark Dowdy made the tackle for Texas El Paso. Well, it started a long, long time ago, I'll tell you, Bill, with a 35-yard touchdown pass from Jared Lorenzen to Aaron Boone. Followed by a nine-yard run by Pinter, a 12-yard pass to Holt for a touchdown, a 49-yard pass to Chris Bernard. This was all back in the first half. 35 to 10 at halftime. It is now 70 to 17. Beach again, the ball carrier. Arliss Beach again on the carry. Let's send it down on the field to Drew Diener. Well, Rob, as you recap that score, and you'll find that 12 different Wildcats have scored points today. Nine position players. Holt's the only man with two touchdowns. Everybody else has one that has scored, and three different kickers. So nine plus three, 12 guys scoring. Everybody's got their hand raised over here on the sidelines. One to be number 13. Thank you, Drew. Beach now with eight carries, 63 yards on the day. As Kentucky works out of the eye formation here in the fourth quarter. Beach. Finds running room across midfield down the sidelines. Got a blocker out in front. And all the way down to the 21. Tim Woodard finally knocked him down. It's a 46-yard run for Arliss Beach. Well, they're just gonna they're just gonna toss it to Beach. He's going off tackle. He gets a good block and is able to take his speed and beat. The defensive guy from UTEP to the corner and cut up field and get a big, big gainer. Great run in there by Beach. And he's got 109 yards now on the afternoon. Nine carries for 109 yards. Now this is Hopewell. All right, big, yeah. Up the middle and carrying it down inside the 20. That'll be a gain of six. It'll be second down and four yards to go. Last time the Wildcats had two players rush for more than 100 yards in the game. It was Mark Higgs and Mark Logan. What a duo they were. And what year was that? Yeah, back when you were playing. October 12th, 1985, against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. That's ancient. Kentucky keeping it on the ground. On the carry. Higgy had 125, Bill, and Mark Logan had 115. Big day, and I tell you, a lot of times what you happen, I remember about that, is the Bulldogs pressured the line of scrimmage with eight, nine men. They they wanted to play man-to-man -man outside, and UTEP has done some of that today, and that's what's allowed these guys. Once you break that first line of containment, it's very difficult. You don't have too many people left when you have that many that many defensive guys in, located in one area. Cats out of the eye. This is third down and four yards to go. Hopewell to take it to the end zone. And Kentucky has put up 76 points. Well, I tell you, you got to go back a lot of years. Kentucky scored 72 against Tennessee Tech back in 1951. On September 15th, 1951, they beat Tennessee Tech 72 to 13 here at Stall Field. And in 1950, I believe the record 83 against North Dakota, 83 to nothing on November 18th, 1950. And the quarterback of that 1950 is Bay Pirelli, who's here in the stands with us today. It is 77 to 17 with a conversion. Let's go down on the field to Drew. Well, we've still got six minutes and 51 seconds left to go in the game. And the Wildcats lead it 77 to 17. I tell you, that's just too many push-ups. <laughs> you can't get it done. <laughs> Especially on a hot day like this. That looks like a mini jack, not a push-up to me. All right, we'll break away for a moment. We'll be back with the conclusion of this home opener here at Commonwealth Stadium after this. With the ball coming up, I need to look as healthy as I can. That's why I'm drinking so 
love and bail good for you, low-fat milk, with sweet acidophilus plus vitamins and such. And I figure anything that good for you inside has got to be good for your overall complexion. That's why I also bathe in it. New Southern Bell Good For You Milk. It's low fat, and does it taste good? You bet your sweet acidophilus. Hooterville Marine is the Tri-State's number one high-performance engine specialist. Hooterville Marine carries top-of-the-line performance boats by advantage, equipped with custom or mercruiser power, including V-holes. From 20 to 40 feet, 22 to 28 foot sport cast, or 22 to 28 foot party cast, customized in seven different colors and fades at no additional cost. Look for our special offers on area's best shopping exclusively at 7onyourside.com. Hooterville Marine, high-performance specialists on Highway 62 West in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Yeah. Back for the final six minutes and 51 seconds with Kentucky leading 77 to 17. The Wildcats have rushed the ball here this afternoon for 366 yards and they've got nine players with rushing yardage. Sakurovich again to kick off. Oh, he got a hold of another one. Through the end zone. Big leg on that guy. He's about a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, kid. I tell you, when you get that kind of height and you can leverage that leg and whip it, and that's what Seven has done. He's whipped it out of the end zone for the second time. Wildcats have amassed a total of 591 yards in offense. That sounds like a Nebraska offensive day. Just grounded it out on the ground, though. That's a great, great thing for this Kentucky offense. Usually it takes your offense a little more time to start gelling, guys. They usually don't get gel till the middle of the season. If they can take and, and expand on this game and pick up as they have at this point and from last year on the offense, it could be a great, great things to come for this offense. Well, they keep going with Matt Austin in the backfield here in the fourth quarter and it's paying dividends for him as he gets another good Garrett carry. Jed Bassett coming up to make the tackle for Kentucky. And it's time now for the Kentucky Utilities power play of the game. And we go back to that, that run by Shane Boyd as he swept here, almost stepped out of the bounds, but got it in. Third and three, all they're wanting Shane to do is keep it in his hands, get the first down. They're not trying to make anything spectacular here. Next thing you know, he sees a little opening. You can't keep, you can't hold a kid back that much and tell him not to score. Our Kentucky Utilities power play of the game. And on the defensive stop for the Wildcats, Mike Dwayne Roberts. Or, I beg your pardon, Richard Gray. Richard Gray on the stop. Red it is 63. Loss is back to the 32-yard line. Second down and 13 yards to go and the clock running. I'll tell you, it's not running fast enough for Gary Nord and the Miners right now. It can that run a little it. bit faster. Tough, tough day for the UTEP Miners. Cruz to throw and they say that's caught over at the far side of the field. And he stayed in bounds. Gonzalez on the catch over at the far sidelines. They keep the clock running as the gain will be up to the 44-yard line. A lot of more new fresh jerseys again in the secondary as well as on the defensive line there. Kentucky get, having just a real good opportunity. I can't say it as much, as much, Rob. You know, you see that they talk about their lack of depth. What a great way to get a little bit of experience, at least for these guys. A good teaching tool. And the crowd here still urging on the Wildcat defense as Austin gets the call and he should have enough for the first down. Matt Austin on the carry. Jed Bassett, Richard Gray. Bassett coming up on the stop and Richard Gray also in there for the Wildcat defense. Now let's see where they've marked it now. First and 10, they'll just have to move the chains ahead. 433 left on the scoreboard clock. And Bill, next week it's the Hoosiers of Indiana who come into Lexington. And we will see a familiar face leading Indiana. Jerry DiNardo's back. Should be interesting to see him. I, I, I have a feeling that this Kentucky staff will hold no, no special place for DiNardo whatsoever, uh, having seen him at Vanderbilt and at uh, LSU most recently. And, uh, It'll be interesting for Coach Carr. He came over from Indiana with the coaching change, so I'm sure he has a little revenge factor there, too. Austin. 
Trying to sweep it to the outside. Matt Austin on the carry. John Sumrall, John number 44, Richard freshman linebacker out of Huntsville, Alabama. Latching on to him from behind and hauling him down. And the clock keeps moving. What an afternoon it has been in this Eight home opener for Guy Morris and his Wildcats. They led 35 to 10 at halftime. At the 49. And have simply blown this game over here, here in the second half. 42 points, is my math right? It's a 42 point second half. 35 in the first half, 42 the second. A pretty good balance. And I haven't had a chance to catch up, but their offense, I mean, right now, they're they're probably three to one rushing now. Part of this game toward the end here has pushed it that way, but at the same time, a lot of it has to do, though, with the way they have just, the, 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 this offense is really coming together and the kids understanding what's going on. Saw Robert Clayton, the offensive guard, go over to the sidelines there and come out of the lineup. That was the holdup. And now we're set to go. Second down and seven from the 49. Austin now has 82 yards on the day and getting more here, a bunch more. Still going inside the 35. And they finally got him and out of bounds down to the 26. Forced out of bounds by Kevin Denbridge. Just about go over the 100 yard mark with that carry. Kevin Detheridge coming up to make the tackle for Kentucky. So it's just shy of the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Miners with exactly three minutes left to go in the game. Austin's got 108 now on the afternoon. 300-yard rushers in the day. Pretty good day at the office for those people. Although UTEP's is... Really, really tough yardage of coming late here in the fourth quarter, the majority of it. Now that time he handed it off to Jimmy Smith, the fullback. Jimmy Smith. And the sophomore from Midland, Texas, gets short yardage. Tough spot to, I'm sorry. Fontaine again on the tackle. Tough spot to be in if you're Coach Nord right here. You know, you're wanting the clock to go on and get your kids on the bus and go home and lick your wounds, but you don't want to sit there at this point and not throw the ball or go for it and let the kids think that you're just packing it in either. Look for I'd look for him to, to move around the pocket again here if he can with this kid. Made a little play action pass and get out on the corner and try to go get some more points. Two minutes left to go here on the scoreboard clock. And Austin is wrapped up at about the 18-17 yard line. Austin on the carry. That time Tayo Aboke made the stop. He's a senior from Houston, Texas. Robinson, Moore, and Deathridge just checked back in for the Kentucky defense. I think they're filling up a little more beef inside, figuring that they're gonna, they got their, their, their not their goal line defense, just beefed it up inside a little bit more and waiting for them to kind of try to rush it in here as they have been off tackle and get this first down. This is third down on a yard to go. We got only a minute 19 left now. Austin is not going to get it. There it is. John Robinson leading the defensive charge, a senior out of Old Washington, Ohio. And it's time now for the Five Star Food Mart drive of the game. Thirteen plays, 75 yards. 6.22 in the first quarter. And it was our two spinner getting the touchdown from nine yards out. That's today's five-star Food Mart drive of the game. Five-star Food Mart, the five-star treatment every day. And on fourth down, they go for it. He's close, and I think he's going to get the spot here. And that'll do it. John Sumrall comes up to make the stop for Kentucky. They mark it at the 15-yard line. It is a minor first down. So they have it first and 10 here at the 15-yard line. This should do it, Rob, if they even snap the ball. I think they'll get off one more snap here. And Cruz will go down at about the 13-yard line, and it is finally over. 
Long, hard afternoon for the miners of Texas, El Paso, Kentucky, with 35 in the first half and 42 points in the second half, put 77 up on the board. The highest scoring game for the Wildcats since 1950, and they won it by a final count of 77 to 17. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. Plenty of families start life on their own in an apartment. And then in time, they're ready for a starter home, a fixer-upper. And before long, they're able to move into their dream home. With Kentucky Farm Bureau insurance renters or homeowners policies, our policyholders get affordable coverage every step of the way. Kentucky Farm Bureau insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. Fox Sunday, a crime wave strikes Springfield. Look at those looters breaking windows. They're living my dream, and you won't let me join them. The Simpsons. Then Hank Hill beats the high cost of airfare. Be careful, he may have shifted. They're in flight. King of the Hill. And does Reese have what it takes to join the city's finest? I think I found my calling. Mom, Dad, I want to be a pig. A full hour of Malcolm. It all starts with a bonus King of the Hill at 7.30, 6.30 Central, Fox Sunday. The Kentucky Wildcats heading to the locker room, and what a day they have had here at Commonwealth Stadium. Bill, we saw Jared Lorenzen throw for five touchdowns. We, we saw Archer Spinner run for 116 yards, and we saw a lot of points put up on the scoreboard. They did, and you, you're sitting there, and we're looking, trying to figure out a player of the game. You, five TDs. Jared was 10 for 17, I think, on the day. Shane completed one. I think Lumpley completed one. Only 12 completions throughout the day, but I think when it all gets told and everything's cut down, you got to look at what Penner did and what he brought. The uh -huh. lack of a running game the last few years has been very frustrating, to say the least, especially for Coach Guy Morris as an offensive guy. He ends up uh, 16 rushes for 116 yards, hard-fought yards that really mattered early when the game had not separated that far. Well, let's give it to him. Time now for our Ashland Oil play of the game. Player of the game. And it goes to R2 Spinner. Uh, here's, you can just take a look and see there's a couple little different plays he made today. The biggest thing he did was he had great field vision, he had great balance, and he never stopped. And that's the end of the play right there that you saw where he just kept churning and fighting, ended up picking up 15 yards and making something out of nothing. All right, our two spinner, our Ashland Oil player of the game. Let's go down on the field out to Drew Diener. Well, Rob, it really is amazing. When you think about this Kentucky team, the theory all in the preseason was they didn't have any depth. Yet 13 Wildcats scored today, eight of them for the first time. So it really shows that this team is a lot more deeper, I think, than a lot of people anticipated. 77 points on the board, the second most ever scored by a Wildcat team in school history. Don't know if they'll score that many points next week. We'll have the broadcast for you. 7 o'clock, they'll kick it off. Kentucky and Indiana will have the delayed telecast on at 11.30 on most of these same. Uh, UK Network affiliate stations. The final score once again, 77-17, but I think the best stat of the day, the Wildcat did 462 push-ups as he celebrated Kentucky touchdowns. I'm sure many Kentucky fans across the state will this evening. 77-17, the final score. Thanks for joining us. University of Kentucky Wildcat Football has been brought to you by Ashland, the who in how things work. By Alltel, now offering solutions right here in Kentucky. By Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, decide to be healthy. By LG&E, customers first, energy that lasts. By your local Chevy dealer. By Speedway. And by Southern Bell Dairy. Around here, it's a tradition. to lift everyday objects? Finding your golf swing not up to par? Do everyday tasks become painful? You may have carpal tunnel syndrome. You don't have to live with the pain and discomfort. In fact, ignoring the pain may be the worst thing you can do. MedFirst Medical has an advanced, effective, state-of-the-art non-surgical treatment program that could change your life. Don't wait for the pain to go away. Call MedFirst Medical Center today at 1-888-515-2225.
Hi, I'm Tubby Smith, and Fox 7 is on your sideline. Welcome to the Fox 7 feature movie.